Stand up, New York Giant fans. Super excited. Um, I reached out to Lawrence. Uh, I, I think I actually talked to Lawrence on Twitter maybe like three months ago, and we were supposed to do something, and then, I don't know, I got busy, and I forgot to ask him again. And then I reached out to Lawrence again this week, and, um, yeah, he said he, he was excited to come on talk New York Giants football. Before I even introduce you, because you don't even need an introduction, you are responsible for probably two of the five happiest moments of my life. Uh, kicking to the new, kicking the New York Giants to the Super Bowl um, in that in that negative thirty degree weather in Green Bay. So thank you for me and everybody in the chat, Lawrence. Yeah, well, I are you married with kids? Do you have, do you have wife <laughs> well, I should have said I should have said sports. Okay, it's top five. It's top okay. top five sports. Top okay. five when it comes to the New okay. York Giants for sure. When it comes to the New York Giants. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Um, me too. It's one of my top five sports moments for sure. How that's got to be number one for you, no? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which, all right, no. which one was more special for you, Green Bay or San Francisco? Oh, Green Bay. For sure. Had to be, right? 47 yards, right? Well, it's just the, you know, what had transpired prior to the game, Lambeau Field, Green Bay, cold weather. San Francisco is, you know, has its history, Candlestick Park, but um, just all, everything that went into you know, beating the Packers and Brett Favre. So, yeah. Oh, oh dude. What's up, I, Sebastian? I, 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 the, the, one, seen it. the one thing that always stood out to me from that game, and, and I want to get – I definitely want to talk about this team. I definitely want to get your opinions on the game yeah. this week. I definitely want to get your opinions on Daniel Jones and the, and, and the whole team in general. But, Are we allowed to talk about Daniel Jones? <laughs> that's like the thing now on Twitter, right? Like, like you, get, you get your head cut off if you say something positive about the guy. And if you say something negative about the guy, people think that you want to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's fine. so uh, – what's the word I'm trying to come up with, Lawrence? It's so, Like milk uh, toast? Yeah. It's, it, it, you can't it, even talk about it anymore. No. So it, it's just – it's so overplayed. But I, I definitely want to talk to you about, obviously, because he's the quarterback. And obviously there's yeah. going to be a big decision in a month. Um. But, yeah, the one thing that always stood out to me about that Green Bay game that we were just talking about, the two things I should say. One is Tom's face. Okay. Yeah. Tom Coughlin's face looked like it was going to fall up. And Plaxico Burst in that game, I say it to this day, that is probably the greatest game I've ever seen a wide receiver have, maybe in the history of football, when you factor in the conditions of that game, how important that argue. game was. The cornerback he was going up against, Al Harris, who was one of the best cornerbacks in football at that time, he completely undressed him start to finish. Uh, yeah, Plaxico was on it. Him and Eli, just the, you know, Tumor had a decent game too. Just the ability to throw and catch the ball because the reality of it is, you know, Jeff and I would typically do 10 to 12 kicks on each side of the field. Just tells you, just painting the picture here for how cold it was. Um, and we could only do, I think we did like three or four and Jeff had to stop. Jeff could no longer catch the snaps from Jay Alford to, to warm up for field goal. So we actually just stopped doing it. We didn't do anymore. Um, so essentially all my kicks in the game were basically like practice reps because I, I didn't go past 30 yards, I don't think, in pregame. So I just said, you know what, screw it. Um, I just didn't want to see Jeff dropping a bunch of snaps either, right? Mentally, that probably would have screwed me up. But he just physically could not catch the football. So what Plaxico and Eli Eli's a monster. were able to do in that game uh, was pretty incredible. You played for the Chiefs too, right? Later in your career? No, before. Oh, before it was before. You ended with the yeah. Giants. Or did you put, did you go somewhere else after? I went to Tampa. After. You went to Tampa. Eli Manning in 2011. Is that not one of the greatest single years you've ever seen a quarterback have? Obviously, you saw it firsthand. Yeah, yeah, he was on another level, um, dude. <laughs> he was on he, another he, level that year. Yeah, and you know we had guys, right? If you think about it, Hakeem, <laughs> Victor Cruz. Things we'll talk about probably later when you're talking about Daniel Jones. Uh, Mario Mario Manning. Manning. Yeah. I mean, good tight ends, right? Jake Ballard, uh, unfortunately, got hurt in the Super Bowl. Uh, just kind of like a plotter. You know, wasn't a game breaker. Uh, kind of like this guy Bellinger we have now. It doesn't seem like he's going to ever take the top off a of defense, but we'll catch the ball and get 10, 12, 14 yards. Um, I was actually – this is off topic. Uh, Evan Ingram had a hell of a game for Jacksonville on Sunday. 150 yards. Like 162, right? Two touchdowns? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Good for him. Um, that's kind of what you always I, thought he could be, right? You always thought he could be. But, again, yeah. skill guys are not going to produce in this offense. Not with this – this until they fix this offensive line. Dude, <laughs> the offensive line last week was so bad. 
that, that was the worst I think I've seen it all year last week against the Eagles. It was so bad. Well, I don't, I don't think I think people are really underestimating what you know. I get Bredesen may come back, but what about Josh Azudu? Like Josh Azudu was young player coming along, you know, big. He's he's much bigger than Gates, and God bless Gates, but guys, he's not a guard. He he's not big enough, strong enough. I actually like him at center, but Feliciano's done an okay job there. You can't pull Feliciano out of that job, but Josh Azudu, I think, is the difference maker when when we're running the football. When he came in in Jacksonville, when Bredesen got hurt, we just started running the ball down their throats, and we just haven't quite been the same running the ball without him. And then, of course, you know, Evan Neal struggled mightily. Big uh, time this week, yeah. Bad. He looked bad. His footwork was terrible. Uh, but again, he's a rookie. Andrew Thomas had struggles. You're going to have to live with this. He's going to be a premier right tackle. It's just a, you're going to have to live with the bumps and bruises. Yeah, similar to Andrew Thomas's rookie year. You know, you yep. kind of expected that. You were hoping not, but generally speaking, I, I, I usually think quarterback, corner, and tackle are probably the hardest transition year one uh, for a rookie, those three positions specifically. So I, I kind of expected Neil to struggle a bit this year, and yeah. he'll get better. He's a monster. The guy, the guy his, his athletic ability is off the chart for a man of his size. So I'm not worried about him. The interior, though, yeah, I'm mm. worried. We need a couple of pieces on the interior. Um, I'm just going to read yeah. a couple of these comments, man. Sebastian says, I love you, Lawrence. You helped me become a true Giants fan in late 2007. No, nah, yeah, I, I saw that earlier. I appreciate you saying that, Sebastian. What's the $5 for? You owe me 5 bucks. <laughs> what is yeah, that? I owe, you, <laughs> I owe you 5 bucks, Lawrence. We'll, we'll talk about it after the show. And NY Giants 26 says, sup, my fellas. Lawrence, come back, replace J- – well, Jamie's a punter. You're a special uh, teams guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. How bad were the special teams? I think this last week was the worst special teams I've seen the Giants have in years this past game against the Eagles. Yeah, and it's funny because we blocked a punt, right? So it's like yeah, it, that's how bad it was. Um, here's what traditionally happens, though, and I know a lot of people want to just point fingers and say they suck on special teams. When your roster is this debilitated, devoid of talent, it trickles all the way down, right? So all your, your, your semi-good or your good – but special teams players are now forced to go play real snaps on defense, offense, whatever the case may be. That's where the Giants are right now. You know, they've lost a lot of their guys, their core guys. And when you've got different guys, you know, running down and covering kickoffs, kickoffs coverage is like playing offensive line in a weird way. You're used to the guy who runs next to you running down the field next to you a lot, right? So you know, kind of know what he's going to do when he sees something. It's the same thing as an offensive lineman. There, there's so many mismatched parts on this kickoff cover team. Uh, we haven't done a lot in a return game, but, you know, we don't really have a true kick returner either. Um, and then Richie James has obviously had his issues uh, that resulted in another bigger issue for us with the, losing to Dory Jackson. But that was a coaching mistake. Like, you, yeah. you don't put a Dory Jackson back there to unless his only job is to fair catch punts. That's it. I don't – I said something on Twitter when it happened. I'm like, we, we are literally averaging – Five yards a game, five yards of return, and we only averaged two returns a game. So 10 yards of field position, we just lost our best cornerback on our football team for 10 yards of sense. field position. It, uh, Brian Dable could have a redo. I guarantee you it's that one. Yeah, um, that because- made no sense. Like you said, we were so depleted to begin with. And even going into the year when we were a completely healthy roster, I said this on my channel before the year started. I thought that Dory Jackson, outside of obviously like the quarterback, because the quarterback's always, you know, the most important player on a team. But I thought he was the most, the, the least guy they could lose to, to, to go down with an injury was a Dory yeah. Jackson because we were so thin at that cornerback position. Now you tack on Aaron Robinson's already hurt. McKinney's out, you know, in terms of the secondary. So that made no sense. It made no sense to have him back there fielding punts. And I love Dable. I think Dable overall has done a great job this he year. He has. Yeah, but he can he can take some of he this can heat make mistakes. because he yeah can he's make, not perfect. Yeah, and that was a mistake. And and you know Richie James had his fumbles, but the the thing is we know why, right? The first one was the sleeves. You don't wear yeah. sleeves when you return kicks, and that's the first thing I saw. I said it the day it happened. I think I tweeted it. It's like he had sleeves on. You don't returners don't have sleeves. You know Dante Hall wore them, but he's a different animal. I actually saw Dante Hall after that game here oh, really? in Kansas City. Yeah, and. Uh, I talked to him about his sleeves, and that was just how he did it. Now, most guys don't. Like, I think Dante is the only kick returner that ever wore sleeves, and he kind of wore them rolled up, but Dante was a completely different animal. He didn't really get hit much. 
The other one was just an incredible play by Seattle. They rocked I don't, him on that second play. Well, the, the guy jumps in. If you watch the film, he jumps in with a flying elbow, and the elbow hits the ball. No one's holding on to that ball. That was just a bad day for Richie James. But he 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 was catching the balls, right? It's not like he's fumbling punts on the catch. Um, They should have just rolled him back out there the next couple of weeks. Or, the next or week just call just, up a guy like Pimpleton if you don't want to have Richie James. Like, it, it made yeah. no sense – to have a door Jackson back there fielding punts. That was that was his that biggest. was dumb. Yeah, it was dumb. Absolutely and, 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 dumb. And you know what? And it's hurt. I try to look at it from a positive standpoint. I look at it like it's a first year head coach. He's young and he'll learn from this. He'll grow from this because I guarantee you he's not making that same mistake again. No, Tom Coughlin never had a starter back there ever. Yeah, can't. I, I, I think can't. back before Coughlin, J- Jason Seahorn. Seahorn. Yep. Everybody knows the injury with that in terms of special teams. So Giants fans know about all about that, and it just made no sense. Um, him None. back back there uh, fielding punts. Um, I definitely want to get into the, this week's game in a second. Carter says I met Lawrence in Atlantis when I was eight, and again in Albany. You brought me oh, wow. in the locker room. Thank you for the best day. That's awesome, man. Oh, That's awesome, you're man. Up. the Carter. You're welcome. That's, That's awesome. awesome. I tried to do that as much as I could with the Buck, kids. Buck Josh was at the game. He says I was at the game at Candlestick. Come on. The whole stadium was quiet after the Kyle Williams fumble and winning field goal from our guy, Lawrence Tynes. That's what you want to hear when you're on the road in the playoff. Silence. <laughs> that um, game, we want, you want to talk about signature games. That's Eli's signature game, that game against yeah, the 49ers. No question. Where he got, where he, what did he get hit, like 30 times that game? Yeah, that D-line was serious with Justin Smith and Alden Smith. And that was a – Patrick was a Willis physical, was, uh, was uh, on the linebacking team. Tour. Smith. That was a classic NFC matchup of two very, very physical football teams. We were physical too. Uh, weather, rain, muddy. Yeah, that was Eli's shining moment. I mean, he's had great moments, but if you think of how tough he was, you're always going to think about that game. What was I'm just thinking about these questions because I have an opportunity to talk to one of the guys from my two favorite Giants teams of all time. What was um obviously the second Super Bowl, you were more experienced. The first Super Bowl, when you were going up against the 18 and 0 Patriots, did what was the team's mindset going into that game? I know, like, you guys presented. I remember you guys came off the plane on the black suits and you guys were presenting extreme confidence, but you were going up against the 18 and 0 Patriots. Now, of course, you played them the last week of the regular season. You played them really close. So that maybe gave you a little bit more confidence going into that game. But was there any, like, doubt from within that locker room going into that game based off the opponent you were going up against? No. None no. whatsoever. You guys knew you were going to win. We just, you know, we just knew we could beat them. Um, yeah. You know, we we lost by three, I think it was in the uh, eight thirty five. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we just knew, man. It was just when you get on a roll like we did, it didn't matter. Like it just didn't matter. We we would have beat anybody, anybody, whoever they put in front of us, and it just so happened to be the quote unquote best team in NFL history. They weren't that day. Not that day. <laughs> they only have to, you only have to be better than them on that day. Yeah, man, that defense um, line that they showed up for the Giants in a big way. All of them, even the you oh, know, the whole team. down the line. Yeah, yeah, Jay Alford. Jay Alford snapped field goals in that game and hit Brady right in the chops. I mean, he, you know, I think he had a sack, right? So yeah, at the end, Jay Alford. Jay Alford had a sack and snapped field goals in the Super Bowl. When does that ever happen? That's insane. And it's nuts. So and every member got- of that rookie class contributed to that Super Bowl too. Yeah, it's funny you say that. We just had Coach Coughlin on my show. Uh, it comes out tomorrow. Um, but we talked about that rookie class. It, incredible. Well, yeah. Incredible. Well, who'd you have? You had Bradshaw. You had Steve Smith. You had uh, uh, Zach. Let's go Yashin. first. Yeah, just go. Yeah, you go. Uh, Aaron Ross, right? Aaron Ross. Played a lot. Um, second round was Steve Smith, receiver. Yeah. Third round was God. I should know this. Um, did we have a third? I got, now I'm gonna pull up. The, I'm gonna cheat, but we. we no, we got, so Kevin Boss and, and Kevin Zach Boss, yes. Zach Zach Diossi, yeah, was a special teamer. Snap punts. So we had two different snappers on that team. We had one that snapped field goals, one that snapped punts. Was and the, he was yeah. actually uh, Diossi was actually the second longest tenure Giant during that. It was Eli and then Diossi drafted as a team. linebacker, ran well. Um, who uh, it's and then Adam Coates, and then you got Marcus Johnson played safety. Yeah. He played a. He played. He actually started a lot of games for us in 08. and then uh, Ahmad was the last pick. What a steal he was! Ste- what a, the whole draft was. 
That was great. Um, you know, Adam Coates was the only one who really didn't really have a crazy career. And then we had uh, Mike Matthews and Craig Dahl, two undrafted free agents that from that rookie class that what played. An, Craig, an, Craig Dahl started a couple games for us that year. And which team – I'm coming up with questions. Which team, if they played each other, do you think would have won? Because I people ask me this question all the time. I'm going to give you my answer, but I want to hear you first. The 07 Giants versus the 2011 Giants. Which team wins? Uh, the 11. Really? Okay, give me your reasoning. Just offense. Okay. Offense I am going to start. Power. Here's what I'm going to say. I think the 07 team was the more complete roster. I think you had a better offensive line in 07, a much better offensive line in 07. Um, I think your defensive line was great for both teams, but you guys were kind of banged up in 11, and then you kind of put it together in the in the playoffs. But I actually thought the lines were stronger with the 7 team. But the difference is Eli Manning. Eli Manning in 07 mm-hmm. – was not the same quarterback in 2011. So I think the 07 team was actually a better overall team because Pla- they yeah. had playmakers too. Plax was great. Toomer was great. Like, you had playmakers on both teams, but Eli is the, is the biggest difference. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but we also, you know, 11, you got JPP, Linville Joseph, Hakeem Nick, Oh, yeah, there was talent. Cruz. Um, so maybe just because it's fresher in my mind, uh, I'm taking that team, but – I just think we were we could we could score forty or we could win a game seventeen ten. It was just one of those teams. Yeah, man. Both both teams are great. Many guys yeah. just stand up. What's up, Chris Lawrence Tynes is a living legend. Man was a monster on the field and the old Madden games. Oh, he liked you in Madden. <laughs> oh, really? I always got shit ratings. Whatever. I just did you? Yeah, I mean, I just think all the kickers get like seventies to seventy five. I'm like, what's going on? Unless you're Justin Tucker, now you get like a ninety nine. What about Graham Gano? How about he? He should have like a ninety. I don't play it. I haven't played Madden, and my kids play it, so I don't know. I don't know what the hell the ratings are. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I don't have to make. I don't have to make any kicks. Jeremiah says, "Hey, Tana Lawrence, Tynes, stand up. What's going on, Jeremiah? Man, thanks for popping in. Let's dive into this week's game. Obviously, Lawrence, this is this is a playoff game uh, for all intents and purposes. The first one was a playoff game too. The Giants got somewhat fortunate. They tied. It was a game I thought." Obviously, we had well in hand, and we kind of gave it to them. Um, but some of the factors yep. coming in, Washington is off a bye. They haven't played anybody, anybody but us now for two weeks. Yeah. The Giants are coming off probably their worst performance of the year. I'm not saying that they should have beaten the Eagles, but it was a very sloppy performance in all three phases. The defense looked bad. Yeah, they Special suck. teams, like we said, looked horrible. Um, how do you think we stack up in this match? It's actually – I didn't even know this. It's Daniel Jones's first start on Sunday Night Football in his entire career. Um, and it's, I think it's Saquon Barkley's second, but how do you think we stack up in this matchup? Well, you know, I mean, we just, we just played them two weeks ago. We know how we stack up against them. I think we're better than they are. Yeah. Um, you know, they obviously have McLaurin and some, some explosive players, but I give us a big edge in quarterback. I know Heineke is a cool story. I think he's fun to watch. I actually enjoy watching him play. I think everyone does because he, he brings a little bit of, playground fun and moxie to the field, which I love. Um, but the Giants are better. Uh, in my opinion, I think the Giants are better than, than Washington. Um, you know, there should be a pretty good crowd for us. You know, Washington has not done well with their crowds this year. should be a lot of blue in the stands. Um, you mentioned Saquon and Daniel don't have not played on Sunday night football or, or Saquon's done it twice. Well, yeah, when you suck, they don't want to see you. Exactly. On Sunday night football. <laughs> I yeah. feel like we lived – our teams lived on Sunday night, Monday night football. Um, but I just really think this is – a this is you know, because it's so close in, from the previous game, this is a – you're not going to trick anybody. you got to line up and beat their ass. It's a phys- it's going to be who's the physical, more disciplined, more fundamentally sound team. I know that sounds so cliche, but that's what it's going to do. We know what they do. They know what we do. But there's got to be one of those games where you know what we run and we're still going to run it. Yeah. Um, and so – you know, starts up front. These D lines, their D line against our O line, and then you know, I thought our D line got got the best of them uh, the first game. You know, five sacks I think we had on Heineke, and Aziz is getting better every stinking week. I mean, two sacks last game. Anyone want that draft over? Remember how everyone said the Giants should have drafted Chase Young? Well, uh, Aziz Ajilari has twelve and a half sacks to Chase Young's nine, and Aziz played in three less games. And Andrew Thomas kind of worked out. And Andrew Thomas kind of worked out. So um, I like Aziz. You know, I 
I like Kayvon too. The numbers aren't there, but man, he he just wreaks havoc. He plays hard. He plays with so much effort. That's um, the thing, man. Coming in like that was like the knock on him going into geez. this year was he by, by like the by like the draft experts. He doesn't always show the most effort. He doesn't have the highest motor. He has he shows more effort than anybody in our defense from what I see from the play. Like he stands out. Like you remember the play against ETN when we played the Jaguars? He oh, chased yeah. him down from fifty yards. He had two. He had two backside rundowns that game. Yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of Kevin. I think he's gonna be great. I'm a huge fan. Um, you know, I think maybe that was partly because you know these talented players in college will lose interest very quickly in games sometimes, and you, you don't have time to do that in the NFL. Maybe he did. Maybe that's what he put on tape. Maybe that was valid. I don't know. But he sure as hell plays every snap like it's his last for the Giants. So. Um, he's going to be outstanding. And then Aziz, what a missed opportunity for him this year, missing all these games with the calf injury. Seems so trivial, right? Like a calf, but um, and wasn't, wasn't he, it? Wasn't it both legs? Didn't he have it? Didn't he have? Yeah, he did here? one, and then he hurt the other one. But yeah, um, he's a difference maker. They're they get so much more pressure with him, you know, in the lineup. So, and I know he played against Washington. He got that. He got a sack, right? He got a strip sack, maybe. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I think it's just going to be one of those games, man. It's probably be, be a three point game. Uh, I get it's a must win game. So if the giants want to be taken seriously, then go down there and beat their ass. Let me ask you, I'm going to get to a couple more of these, but let me ask you, do you view this as a game where, da where they need to win? If Daniel Jones is coming back to be the quarterback in 2023. So you're asking me if I think Daniel has I'm not, to win this game? I, I think he should be back, but I'm asking you, do you think this is a game that needs to be won to solidify Daniel Jones being the quarterback? Next oh, year? hell no. No. Yeah. I agree oh. with you. I think he's coming back already. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no way. Because um, that's been like a talking point. And by the way, I want to circle back to another thing that you said. You talked about how this is Daniel Jones' first primetime game um, on Sunday Night Football. Well, actually, I did, and then you just kind of – you know, said the same thing. And that's the thing that you see on Twitter all the time, too, from Giants fans. They pick it, Daniel Jones's primetime record. And you talked about, well, when you suck, yeah. you don't play on primetime. Look at the teams this guy has faced on primetime. <laughs> he played Bill Belichick his rookie year. He played Mike Tom in his second year with a brand new head coach after the pandemic. He played Tom Brady twice. He played Pat Mahomes. Like, of course, his record stinks. He's got, like, the worst team in football. Like, I just can't stand these stupid talking points that people it's, come up it, with. That's all they are. Any any somewhat uh, reasonable football mind or people that study the game know, you know, we bust Kirk Cousins' balls a lot about it too, right? Yeah. He was terrible in prime time. Um, yeah, this – look at the teams he's that he's played on. And this one's not even great, guys. They've just overachieved. Like, um, they've been bad. They've been bad. You know, everyone – well, it's, it's the whole thing. We'll get into Daniel Jones, I'm sure, but – the reality of it is, I, I tweeted this today, is show me all the offensive stats you want. I don't care. I, I don't care what Daniel Jones stat you show me that's better than Eli. Better. It's completely different errors. Yeah. Um, but the reality of it is, look at the sacks, and look at the pressures, and look at the hits. Dude. I didn't, I didn't post that. I looked 540 up. pressures. Dude, I looked this sacked. up uh, last, a couple of days ago. Daniel Jones is getting sacked this year. And you and by the way, you've heard from tons of people this year how the New York Giants offensive line has gotten a lot better. And I do think there's been instances where it's been better. But overall, this line still has a lot of work to do. And I think a lot, another thing nobody ever takes into account when they watch the blocking, a lot of times when the Giants blocking, when they're getting it done and Jones has time, it's because they have extra blockers and they only have one or two wide receivers going out running routes because they have to have two tight ends in the block because the offensive line is not very good. But Daniel Jones this year, I couldn't believe this stat when I saw it. He is getting sacked once every 8.68 pass attempts. That is the highest total, not just for the Giants, in the NFL since 2019, going back to the Titans in 2019. And it's, 8 it's, 8 at, 8 it's pass at like 20, it's almost 30% clip. And for people, like it's crazy. And for people that say, oh, it must be Jones taking the sacks, Tyra Taylor's been sacked three times in eight pass attempts. The offensive right. line's not good, Lawrence. It's not good. No, they're no. not. And it's, you can go back and forth with people on Twitter. I don't because I, I don't have to. I know what the hell I'm talking about. I know what I see. Um, it's just that there's some people in the camp that just doesn't don't think he has the intangibles to be great. And then there's some people that think he's good. And and I get it. But um, 
management will will tell you how they feel about him at the end of the year. And listen, the reality of it is he's they're they're going to resign him. I also wouldn't discount the fact that you know Daniel Jones could leave. You know, I, I think people are always saying, "Well, are the Giants going to sign him?" If they don't franchise tag him or put the transition tag on him, it is not unbelievable or out of the realm. Oh, he's going to have a market. You bet your ass he will have a market. He yeah. will have it. There's Houston. There's Carolina. There. You can keep going Tampa, right? Tom Brady's probably done. I mean, the Colts, um, Washington, the Jets. Keep going. Keep going. The Falcons. Like, there's plenty of teams I, that could sign him. A lot of teams would like to have him. So I think they, you know, put one of the two tags on him until they get something done. They're going to have to. That's how I would do it because he is going to have a market. And the last thing this team needs is for him to walk out the door. So is that what you think they do? Because you can use two different tags. You can use the transition tag and then you can yeah. use the traditional uh, franchise tag. You think they're going to do that for both Saquon and Jones, or do you think they don't take? Like, well, I think you can use one or the other. Well, I mean, then you've got Leonard Williams has a thirty million dollar cap hit, right? Thirty two million. Yep. So I think they're going to try to extend Leonard Williams to try to space out that money. Yeah, yeah, no question. You know? um, yeah, I would do that. This the Saquon one is going to get really nasty. That's going to get dicey. This is going to get nasty. You just can't yeah. pay him whatever the hell you, you can't pay him Zeke yeah. money. You can't pay him. You know, it handcuffs your roster, and especially here's the here's what hurt him this year. Um, the kid in Houston, Pierce, yep. right, for, third, third, fourth round, fourth round pick. The the young man, uh, Keith, up in Seattle. What's his name? Oh, uh, third, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, third round pick, number yeah, nine. He's, he's been really good. Absolute monster. Yeah, he's been really. And good. And then you've got this Pacheco guy in Kansas City, seventh round pick. And I'm gonna tell you another absolute thing that hurts monster. Him. I'm gonna tell you another thing that hurts him. Have you seen the free agent running backs this year coming up? It is Josh Jacobs. loaded. Josh, Josh Jacobs, Jacobs, Tony Pollard. There's like three others that are really good too. It's a very rich running back free agency class. So sure. that's going to hurt his market too. I agree. Um, and, and as much as everyone should want Saquon back because of the kind of teammate and player he is, don't ever forget this is a business. And Joe Shane has to make a business decision. If it was a, a personal decision, of course you keep him. Yeah. He's a great kid. Listen, he's, he's my favorite teammate. player on the team. I like yeah. I I love Saquon Barkley to death. And I was pounding the I was pounding the table for him. Um, but as the season's worn along, it has nothing to do with his regression in terms of his stats the last three or four weeks. I just when I look at all the other holes on this team, if I'm Joe Shane, if I if I take my you fan can't. hat off, I can't give him a four year th- three or four year contract. I can't do can't. it. I can't do it. Now, maybe you tag him, and if you can't work things out. But if you tag him, he's just going to be pissed off. So, well, like, you, what's the you point? could potentially do a tag and trade, or you could just let him walk and get a and get a compensation pick. You could do it that way, too. But if, it's going to be interesting to he, see what happens with Saquon this offseason. If, if you just kind of go back and look at how the Bills were built, right? Just go look yeah. at Joe Shane's team. They weren't built around a running back. They weren't. They don't yeah. have a lot of draft. They, they don't even have a lot of money in their running backs in, in Buffalo. And I know there was rumor they were talking about McCaffrey, but that's just not how they're going to win games. Could you the see future. the Giants doing that, pulling a McCaffrey? Could you see them signing Barkley? And if things go south, trading them from within season next year, is that possible? I don't know. Yeah. That, I mean, what are you? I'm just, you I'm just throwing out that as a possibility. What are you going to give them? You know, I McCaffrey has not had the significant injuries that, that Saquon had. Like, like I, McCaffrey yeah. didn't tear an ACL. He didn't he have some back and some hamstring type issues. Nothing. I thought he did so, have an ACL. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought he did have like an ACL type injury. Maybe I'm wrong though. No, McCaffrey hasn't. No, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Barkley, I'm mean, Barkley. Obviously, he's had extensive injury problems. Um, we'll see. I, I, I think Jones is going to be the priority though. I really do. I think, I think he has to be, he has to be the priority because you cannot go backwards. And I think he's done a lot of good things this year. He's only 25. I I wish people would understand that. He's people are screaming for Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker's 25. Thank you. (laughs) Daniel Jones is 25 years old and, and it takes a certain, you know, I think people are also discounting. It takes a certain person to handle this market. And if if Daniel Jones can handle it on a on a bunch of shitty teams, that's all you need to know about. That there's more to this being the quarterback for the Giants than obviously playing well. That's a big part of it. But he he does everything right 
after the football part, like with the media, with the fans, obviously. And that's going to be factored in. It's huge because you saw how this place ate up people, right? Like Geno Smith and some other people just ran them out of town. Um, Geno Smith's a good player, having a great season. But don't ever discount the fact that that takes – you don't know what the hell you're bringing in here when you bring in a college kid. I know what I'm getting with Daniel. I know I can win with them. I know I just need to help him a little bit. Yeah, and you think about it, like look at Baker Mayfield, for example, like how he handles it. Like, how do you think he would he would he would work in New York? York? He wouldn't have lasted. And you saw how Kyler Murray handled the media this year. He wouldn't have lasted. Like he wouldn't let you know. So, like, you're absolutely right. That needs to be factored in when it comes to New York. I think that's part of the reason. And I talked about it. A lot of people disagree with me. I think that's part of the reason why we traded Tony. I don't think Tony handled New York very well, if I'm being honest with you. I don't no. think he was built for New York in terms of the media and everything no. else. You know, and he's not even playing out here. You know, I mean, yeah, he's been hurt Kansas twice for, for Kansas City. <laughs> he's never played more than three games in a row, I don't think, in his NFL career. So, and he had a lot of collegiate injuries too while he was at Florida, and the hamstrings, the hamstrings, the hamstrings. So, Joe Shane, you know, I don't care what happens. I think Joe Shane won that. I just didn't think. Oh. I didn't ever see a happy ending there with that. Yeah, Joe and I like Tony. I, I like Tony when he played. You know, he was fun to watch, but he never played. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got to be on the field. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to be on the field. Hard. Jer- I'm just going to uh, – I want to circle back to Jones, though. I really want to talk a little bit more about him and just the, the future of the offseason. I'm having a great time talking to you. Jeremiah says, hey, Daniel Lawrence Tyne, stand up. Thank you, Jeremiah. Stand and, up. And Wolves says, yo, the man himself, too, said we had a transition from the legend to a wife beater. Oh, you're talking about Josh Brown? Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Jeez. to me, was one of the biggest that black was... eyes – I don't know how why the New York Giants kept him. After yeah, they that found was, out about that, I did not know him at all. Yeah, um, they've had some weird issues between him and then Rosas, and then yeah, yeah. Ro- 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 what was Rosas the one that got the DWI, or was that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Kyle Laletta too, I think, had a DWI. The quarterback too, if I'm not mistaken. But Rosas was a Pro Bowler. Yeah, he was. You know, not L- Laletta was a, just a guy, like. Rosas was a pro bowler and got some crazy DUI running from cops in Arizona or something. That's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. He fell off for the Giants that 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 year after he made the pro bowl, though, which is Did probably he why he was bro. drinking so much. <laughs> <laughs> NY Giants 26 says, I'm for bringing Jones back. Flame me. I don't care. I don't know why anybody would flame you. I, I, I do not do not. You should never have to say that after you say that about Jones. Anyone with half a brain. Half a brain. Everyone listening. I don't know how many people are on the show. Anyone with half a brain. You got 726 not... people listening right now, Lawrence. Tell them. Great. There's more to it than just stats. Okay? We can look at wins and losses. We know they suck. That's a team stat. We can look at all his passing numbers, fumbles, interceptions. Wait, wait. You mean to tell me, Lawrence, in the ultimate team sport that wins should not count as a quarterback stat? Right. Yeah, exactly. I get into this and... argument all the time. Like it's the I think it's ridiculous that people look at win loss record when it comes to Silly. quarterbacks. Warren Moon's got a career under five hundred record if you include the playoffs. Eli Manning's a career five hundred quarterback. Yep. Jimmy Garoppolo has a career seven to hundred winning percentage. Like team matters in the ultimate team sport. You're preaching to the choir. No, yeah, and that's just you know. Hopefully, most of your listeners. I don't know what side of the fence they're on. I actually don't care what side they're on. But Daniel Jones will be back unless he signs with another team because. He will have suitors. He's going to have a dance partner. Someone, oh. someone, someone out there. And listen, if they don't do anything, I think that's a problem. I think if they don't transition or franchise tag him, I think that's an issue. Yeah, let me let they me would, throw out a couple. They of, would be smart to give him one of the one of the tags. Let me throw out a couple of theories for you that I think uh, when it comes to the Daniel Jones situation that I don't think a lot of people take into account. Put on your Joe Shane hat. Okay, put on your GM hat. Okay, here's the couple of scenarios. Let's say you elect to do what a lot of fans, well, not a lot of fans, but thing, theories I've heard from fans. We could just sign Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett will come here for $12, $15 million a year. Jones may cost you $24, $25. Why wouldn't you save the, 10, save the $10 million to just bring in a guy like Brissett? His stats are the same. Okay, here's my line of reasoning why it's you don't do that if you're Joe Shane. Okay. If you bring in Jacoby Brissett, say you went that route or you brought in a Marcus Mariota or a run-of-the-mill free agent quarterback, you bring them in. Say the Giants win three or four games. Daniel Jones goes and signs with the Colts. He wins 12. 
That is a PR nightmare. You'd not look good year two if you're Joe Shane. And Joe Shane, I think, needs to take that into account. The other thing that I think a lot of fans don't take into account when it comes to Daniel Jones is the further progression of other players on this team. The value that he brings back coming back next year, he's already played in this offense. So he's coming in knowing the offense year two. And yeah. you got to think about the further progression of guys like Wondell Robinson, some of the younger players on this roster. You bring in a guy like Jacoby Brissett, he's never played in this offense before. He's never played with these wide receivers. Like, I don't think fans take these things into account. Plus no. all the other things that you said about how he handles the media and everything else. Which is very important. That, yeah. That's one of the most important. When they're talking to these young quarterbacks, that's what they're trying to gauge. How will you handle failure in New York? How will you handle the media? You know, and I know they it's the same thing they went over with Kayvon Thibodeau. That is a big piece of how Giants scout players because the media is an element of playing pro football in New York. It is. I, I yeah. can tell you, I, I was in Kansas City. I got traded to the Giants in 07. When that must I got have been a to, culture shock for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting to. Yeah. So I go to the locker room during OTAs. I get into my locker. And this is just OTAs, right? Like just bullshit, you know, show up, lift weights screw around uh, practices. And there was 50 cameras in front of my locker when I got to New York or whatever. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but there was well, at least lot. 25, yeah. 30 people on stools. Like, like Joe, I, you just signed some dumbass kicker. I'm not Joe Montana, but <laughs> I was like, what the hell is it? I called my wife. I said, you'll never believe this, but there was, you know. And what was it like in comparison in Kansas city? That's what I'm getting. So in Kansas City, there was, you know, even after I hit a game winner, there'd be like five people with their little notebooks going, oh, Lawrence, what'd you do? Well, all right. That's it. <laughs> so it is a big, big deal of yeah. playing football there. It's a, it's a, it's massive. It, it's, it's such a and, big and, thing. And, and like you said, I'm not trying to discount you. You're the man, but you were the kicker. Yeah. This is the quarterback. <laughs> like, and he it, just handled it with so much grace. Um, he, there's a lot to like about Daniel Jones. There really is. What do you – okay, let me ask you a little bit more about Daniel Jones. What do you – do you think Jones can be a franchise quarterback? And and when, and, when, and after you answer that, I want you to give you – I want you to give me your definition of what a franchise quarterback is. But do you think Daniel Jones can be a franchise quarterback? Yeah, my definition is probably a little different than everyone on Twitter. I think people – there's very few friend, there's very few Patrick Mahomes, Justin right. Herberts, uh, who Josh are Allen, early guys, uh, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of those guys, and we call them franchise guys. Well, if that's what a franchise quarterback is, that's not ever going to be Daniel Jones, right? But I also don't think you can't that that having Daniel Jones means you'll never win a Super Bowl. Right. I really think you can win with him. I really yeah. do. I want to see him in an, in the same offense for another year. And I obviously want to see a better offensive line in front of him. And then obviously maybe some better skill guys. He has been the hardest player, I think, in pro football over the last four years to evaluate. Impossible. Um, I have a lot of friends here in town. I live around, you know, 10 to 15 former NFL players that played in Kansas City with me that all played all over the league, but they ended up here in every single one of them. And I'm talking about all pro linebackers, all pro tight ends, all pro linemen. Every single one of them, they're not Giants fans, like Daniel Jones. They're just players, right? They see it differently. They, they've seen them. They've watched them. They know I'm a Giants fan, and they all say, man, they like him. He is nice, right? That's, that's all I need. Not that I need them to validate what I think, but players genuinely think he's a good player, um, just with a shitty roster. Um, and that's exactly what he is, a, a guy who's been hit too many times, right? He's been sacked almost – twice as many times as Eli was through 50 games. So yeah. that has to be factored in, people. It's not an excuse. That has to be it's factored just reality. In. But people and, don't deal in reality. And that's, that's, that's the other that's thing. The and that's the other thing, Lawrence. Like, we could all admit, and even the owner himself admitted, that we failed Daniel Jones. And I look around on this roster right now, Lawrence, and I say, the offensive line – Outside of what we hope next year, Evan Neal's going to mature. He's going to be good. Andrew Thomas is going to be – but we got holes all over the interior of that offensive line, and we don't have a pass catcher to speak of. And we're talking about potentially letting Saquon Barkley go, and you want to trade up 
then draft a quarterback and give up future draft capital to bring a guy into this hellhole? Like, you want to talk about how Daniel Jones was set up to fail? You want to do the same exact thing? Like, I, I don't get it, personally. Now, of course, if they are enamored, if they think Anthony Richardson, we'll just throw his name out there because that's a popular name all over Twitter. If Joe Shane thinks he is the second coming of Pat Mahomes, you do it. But outside of something like that, you stay the course and you keep building this team. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that the Chiefs did exactly what I think you and me are suggesting the New York Giants do before they got Mahomes. They had Alex Smith as their quarterback for five years, and they kept building up that roster. They got Travis Kelsey. They got, obviously, uh, Tyreek Hill. They got all those weapons. And then Mahomes came in, and he was set up to succeed. Right now, the New York yeah. Giants don't have a team. They don't have close to a team that could support a quarterback. No. They don't? No. They, I, they, I, they don't. They need to get him, obviously. They need to get this offensive line fixed. I, it's taken a, a, a better part, a decade. It's still not fixed. Since so, you left the team, I blame you. Well, that's fine. Um, that's, <laughs> I'll take it. That's I'll take it. But it has been a, an Achilles heel, man. And that's how you build football teams. I get it. Even if you had skill guys, it wouldn't matter. Um, yeah. He doesn't have time to throw the football. I watch film like you do, maybe some of the other guys. It's pretty bad, man, when they're leaving five, six, seven guys at times, seven guys against the Eagles in to protect. And, of course, a couple of them always leak out for a little outlet pass in the flats. But they cannot even protect him with, with seven, seven against four. Seven against four. Yeah. I mean, Philly Philly blitzed a little bit. Um, but seven against four, and we just can't block it up. It's It's, it's tough. It's all, and you never I see do, him, I do think it's going to get a lot better, though. I do think you, a lot next year. Have you ever seen him slam the ball? Have you ever seen him get frustrated? Yeah. Have you ever seen him look at his lineman and um, get pissed off? He just has it. Um, there's something to be said about that. You respect him. And he's I, competitive. Listen, I'll be the first to say I have never been full bloom in love with Daniel Jones. I didn't like the pick when we made it. I'm not in love with him. I've never called him Danny Dimes. I've never. No. But this year, I've gained so much more respect for him. Um, and I think the haters have made me admire him that much more. And I truly believe he is the best guy to push forward with. I'm not saying I'm giving him a five-year contract. I'm not doing that. But I'm giving him a short-term contract. If his agent is smart, if he has a good agent, and I'm sure he does. Yeah. First-round pick. Whoever the hell his agent is. It's, it's simple. It, it's even for them, right? Do you... Unless somebody offers you some five-year magnificent, you come back and play the same offense. Come back, yeah, yeah. Unless let's say the Texans give him, you know, they'll have a ton of cap room, a ton of whatever. Yeah. Say they give him hypothetically five years, two hundred million, which okay. is not crazy money anymore. It's you know, really not <laughs> with a hundred million guaranteed. Yeah, his he's going to have to take that. He's going to have to leave and go start over again, which will be fine. But the reality of it is, if he's smart. And, and he gets, you know, a two year, like, let's call it 55, let's call it two years, 60 million. Maybe it's not, you know, 35, 40 guaranteed. I would take that to stay in New York and try and build something because Listen, obviously there's, because if he has one good year, they're going to keep, they're going to maybe tear that up and redo it. Yeah. And it would be the first time in his career he's getting to play in the second year of a, with an offense, a good offense in terms of the, well, well yeah. He played yeah, two Jason years Garrett. with Garrett, but that was from the Flintstones. Like, this is a modern-day offense, and he's coming back year two, something he's familiar with. Um, I, th I think all things equal, Danny Jones comes back. He'd be silly not to. Do you I know what will blow your mind is he threw for more yards per game last year than he has this year. Is that true? 220 to about 200. That's what he's averaging. So this is going to be crazy because – I, I look at Let me stats ask you about Kafka too, by the way, because you got me thinking yeah. now with the yardage. Yeah. So he so last year he averaged 220 yards a game throwing. Right. This year 200. But right. he's also he only got sacked 22 times last year. Double that now. Double it. Well, he only played 11 games, right? I think right. 11 or 12 games. I think it was 12. But this year is 46. With what are we at? Five to play? Four to play? Four to play. 13 games. Crazy numbers. Like how many times he's been hit and sacked. And, and that's with us throwing like the third or fourth fewest times in the league. That's with us getting the ball out quick. We don't throw a it's lot of deep nuts. balls. It, it's so as, as archaic in, in uh, as Garrett's offense was last year, you have to really think back. Like they did protect him to some degree because he didn't get sacked nearly as much as he's getting sacked now. 
That's true. That's crazy. It's crazy. That's true. That's true. It's nuts. Um, it's nuts. I want to ask you about Kafka, though, because he's been such a, a popular talking point. I just want to make sure, because just in case people have questions for you, I want to get to these real quick. Chris says, question for Lawrence. As a kicker, your play either makes you a hero or a zero. How did yeah. you respond to the zero? That's kind of like a closer in baseball, like like Mariano Rivera, Edwin Diaz. Like you, you only get you only you get that one yeah, spot um, to shine. Yeah, you just try not to have a lot of zero moments. Um, yeah, have more good ones than bad ones. I know that sounds stupid, but um, I didn't have a lot of zero moments. I had them. They they help build character, but uh, you just move on from them. Yeah. I'm a you have to, right? You got no choice. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I you, was pretty you, good how, at stuff like what that. What did you miss? Two in the – not that I'm picking you at all. You made – you got us to the Super Bowl. You missed two f- kicks before that one, right? In yeah, the I made three. And Green Bay, I made three. I was three for five. Best game it, of my life. Exactly. Because you hit the one that mattered in those it conditions. Hard. It was um, tough. I can't even – how much different did that football feel off your foot in those conditions than like a typical game? Well, just everything was tough. The whole kickoffs were tough. The right. field goal in the first quarter I made was tough. The field goal in the second quarter I made. Like, everything was tough. Like, yep. it was just the most difficult day I've ever had kicking. I could imagine, man. I I was cold in my living room with the fireplace. Uh, <laughs> yeah, watching was, you guys, so I could imagine. Um, it, was, it was cold. But I want to ask you quick about Kafka. As Ryan Jack says, thank you for hitting that field goal against Green Bay, Lawrence, Ryan says. And, no problem. And word says, Lawrence, mother blank, it's time. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I want to ask you about Kafka because he's been such like a, a popular discussion and talking point on Twitter. It seems like – and here's what I'm going to say before we get into him. Since I've been watching the New York Giants, whether it's Gilbride, whether it's McAdoo, whoever the play callers always gets ragged on. It doesn't matter. It's like a thankless position. Um, I think Kafka's doing a good job because I look at all the limitations on this roster – and I look and I, and there's don't get me wrong. There's instances that I don't like certain things that he does. I don't like all of his play calling. I would like to see them use the hurry up more. I like the way that they were using that earlier in the year, especially earlier in the game, because I felt like yeah. they were getting into rhythm. But overall, when you look at the complete landscape of this offense this year, the Giants right now rank eighth in red zone offense. They're scoring a touchdown 62% of the time. Last year we ranked 32nd. In that category. Yeah. The year before, we ranked 31st. We haven't been as high in this statistical category since 2014. And I think in the red zone is really where you get to see the makings of a play caller because that's where it's really hard to draw up guys and get guys open. <laughs> with it's, with it's, no it's, players. With no players. So I don't get this thrashing of Kafka. I think he's done a pretty damn good job factoring in all the overall limitations of this offense. Hmm. The, I mean, the people – probably yell, complaining about him are the same people that probably said we were going to win four games this year. So yeah, <laughs> it does. Uh, people just love the bitch. It, it just, I don't know. I don't get it. I think he's, I think he's outstanding. I Did think he's great. People say the table should take over the play calling. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I, I, I think do we like, look at the pieces we have in this offense. We got nothing. Not to mention you have, and not that I'm knocking Jones, but you have a quarterback first year in the offense. So that's a limitation in itself too. He's still learning. Yeah. And just people in and out, you know, Bellinger was out for a while. Um, Cager was in and out. Uh, just no receiver. I mean, I shouldn't, I hate saying no receivers. because I don't want to disrespect Hodgins and Richie he's James. Been good, Hodgins. And, he's and, been good. Yeah. He's a nice player. Yeah. I think, I think because of where we're at in the season and, how desperate we are. We think he's probably better than he is. Oh, hundred <laughs> um, percent. But you know, Slayton, I think is a guy you got to keep around. I really do. And I'm sure he's going to get decent money offers in the free agent market because he can fly. And if he's your number three or two somewhere, he's going to feast. You know, he will really, he, they'll, he'll have a market. Slayton's going to have a market. Um, and, and if kid. you look at the wide receiving class this year, it's very thin. Like, yeah. Slayton's like the third or fourth most accomplished receiver on the list. So that's why I worry that the Giants and might I, not be able to bring him back. Yeah, they might not because someone's going to, you know, offer him some pretty good money. He's still, you know, young. how we kind of like when we offered Galladay $72 million, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, you know, the thing I appreciate about Slayton is, you know, he took a, he not only did he, he get kind of demoted, but he took a pay cut to start the season. You know, he, they gave him whatever the number was. Uh, I don't know what the hell his number is. Like with that one year deal. Like 800,000 he got or something like that he took. Well, he was originally at like 2 million or something like yeah. that. 
and then they took them down to 900 or they were going to cut them at the end of camp. Remember? Yep. And that tells me a lot about a player. Um, and he's a good kid and he's young and he's fast and he, listen, he has some drops. That's okay. Uh, he'll, I don't know that he'll ever have the best hands in the league, but man, if you watch, he can create some serious separation yeah. um, and make some plays. So we'll see if he wants to stay. If I was Slayton, I'd hit the hit the road. Well, I, just, if be, I'm playing, just I'm because going... they made you take a pay cut, right? You're just pissed off. You're like, okay, I'm gonna play and be a good soldier. But you bet he wants to leave. I think I think Slayton was smart too when he did that, though, and I respect the hell out of him for doing it. Oh, I do too. That's why I said it. But I think Slayton looked at the situation. And he said, well, what do I got here? I got Kadarius Tony, who he probably knew at that point in time was not liked that much by this coaching staff. Probably yeah. wasn't going to see a lot of playing time. I got Kenny Galladay, who always gets hurt. I'm going to get a real opportunity in this offense. I have chemistry with Daniel Jones. Um, so I think he saw that as an opportunity where he was going to be able to get starters reps this year and then hit free agency in a thin wide receiver class and probably yeah. strike it pretty big. So he took the pay cut. I praise him for it. This team would be in huge trouble if it wasn't for him um obviously he's been great for us he has over 600 yards receiving had he played a full allotment of snaps from the start of the year he'd probably have like a 12 or 1300 yard season um he's done a tremendous job for the new york giants but i think he was smart uh, knowing that he was going to be able to capitalize on the situation and now i think he's not coming back because of that because i i, I yeah. think i think somebody's going to be willing to give him a good amount of money but i hope he's back i, I think i think if you could bring him back if you draft the receiver in the first round and wandell What's your take on him? Because we finally got to see how the Giants really wanted to implement him in this offense, and then he gets hurt that game. But he looked great in that game. I think he looks great, but, again, ACLs are scary. No joke. Yeah. It's scary. He'll never be the same player. I'm sorry. He'll you think never so? be yeah. the same player. Never. Be, yeah. Never. He'll never be the same player. So that's just how it works. I know some people come back from him, but no one's ever the same after that injury. I'm sorry. So you think it's going to be – yeah, you, you think he's going to struggle the next year, probably. I, I actually even forgot about him, to be honest with you. Yeah. I know that sounds cold, but uh, I forgot that he – because he was such a splash player, right? He showed up, and then he he, could, he didn't play early because he was I know, like Tony last he, year, that one big game. He played, game. and then – I mean, I'm not saying he can't come back and be a productive player, but he's not big, right? He doesn't go up and make contested catches. He's more of a slot, kind of a gadget guy. And listen, I think he's a great player, but – ACL, man, that's tough. Yeah. I hope you're wrong, but you're probably, at least yeah. for next year, it's probably going to be at least a multi year recovery until he's 100%, if he ever gets back to 100%. Chris says, I refer to Romo as trophyless Romo. Thanks to Lawrence. <laughs> that's the perfect I forgot name. when I named him that. You did? I don't, I don't, even, I didn't even remember you naming him that. You, that was your nickname for Tony Romo. I have a lot of names for Romo. <laughs> I forget. You that's guys, awesome. some of my favorite memories are against Tony Romo as a Giants fan. He was good, man. Oh, he was great. God, he's a good player. Um, yeah. It sucks, right? Because you got guys like him who never won one, but he's he's a damn good quarterback. Tony Romo had about a five-year stretch where he was probably oh. top five quarterback in the league. Every year. And Eli Manning got yeah. to sign the wall. Yeah, yeah. That was there. <laughs> Did you ever get to I sign scored, it? I scored. I didn't sign it. I scored the first points that night in that stadium. Um, Did you? That was the walk-off, so I hit the game winner the same night, so – we scored the first and then the last. We opened it and closed it. And then Eli signed the wall and then we walked out. That was, I, I remember watching. I was actually in Vegas for that game. I remember watching it. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. We we're just like, that place is beautiful. Have you been? I have not. No. You should go. It's nice. I definitely want to go. That's if I've only been to one. Obviously, I've been to MetLife a ton of times. I've only been to one road stadium and that's um what, actually where they're playing this week. Uh, FedEx Field, which is a dump. Oh, gross! Yeah, absolute shithole. <laughs> yeah, but, that place sucks. But the Dallas State—that's that—that's probably where I want to go next. Oh, uh, you got to get out. You got to. How are the Eagles fans at the link? By the way, is are are they? Do they yeah, live they're up tough. to the, to the reputation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, I heard they overtook MetLife this Sunday. Um, they did. Yeah. You know, Kansas City. There's no place like it. I'm sorry. I, I mean, MetLife was cool, uh, but. MetLife, actually, Giant Stadium was my favorite, 07. Like, I was there 07 and 08. Like, there's nothing like Giant Stadium. Yeah. Um, Before MetLife the is you're talking about, yeah. MetLife is kind of meh, right? It's like, dude, eh. what the hell were they thinking with the architecture of that? It looks like know. a TD but, rack. I don't, I don't but know. What Arrowhead, thinking. if anyone that is listening has ever been to Arrowhead, there is no place like it in this league. Not even, not, there's, no, there's no place like it. 
when night you say, game, when you game. say no place like it, do you mean the atmosphere or do you mean the like, atmosphere, the noise, the level? What about it's Seattle? A, like that's notorious for that, right? Kansas City's seven decibels louder and it's open air. Wow. 137, I think they hit. I wow. went last year when they played the Giants. Monday night football. Absolutely. You know, we only lost. We should have won that freaking game. Who was offside? Oh, Shane. Yeah. Yep. Oh yep, my yep. God. We won the game. We won the game. We could have won the game. And we, we, we won the game. Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Because I think James or somebody, I don't know who, who picked him off. Julian or picked him off. Game's over. Yeah. No offsides, but place was electric. It was electric. You know, Daniel played a, in a tough environment. Got to bring the boys down. So we were on the sideline for most of the uh, pregame. That was fun. Uh, but that's – you got to go to Arrowhead, man. You got to put that on your list. Maybe I got maybe, maybe I got to go to Arrowhead. Maybe I'll meet you at a game at Arrowhead. You have like, to go to Arrowhead. That sounds it's, like uh, – When do the, the Giants craziest... play, they play there next? They play... it'll, I mean, they just played last year, so it'll be yeah. a long time. Uh, it'll be like six years because next time they'll come here next they'll time. They'll be here, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Tudo, what's going on? He's he's all the way from Italy, by the way. He says, massive salute day to Tudo. Tudo. Senor Guzzo, all the diehard Giants fans in the house. He actually, so Tudo lives in Italy. Um, every year he travels to the States for one game. He goes to the okay. link. He goes to the link oh, every wow. year we play the Eagles. Yeah. Wow. They have a direct yeah. flight from Paris to Philly, probably. I'm guessing. And and he said last year he got arrested because he got into a fight at the uh at the state. He did? That's what he said, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. I believe it. I believe it. There's a there's a lot there's a lot of rowdy fans supposedly in Philadelphia, but um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's funny. We were talking about quarterbacks. I'm going to go here in a second. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, they, if people forget how quickly Eagles were ready to give up on Jalen Hurts last season. Yeah. Last year. Last, last year, year, Jalen Hurts had 16 touchdowns and 10 picks, and he looked horrible in the playoff game against the Bucs. He looked horrible at MetLife Stadium. Through, I was he at that game. Picks. He threw like four picks or something like that. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. I think Devontae Smith was either hurt or not playing well. Isn't it? Isn't it kind of all like, of a sudden? You give him AJ Brown, Goddard. You got this offensive line healthy. Second year in the same God, offense. Second year in the offense. Um, Jalen Hurts is nice, but I'll say this: I think Daniel Jones has way more upside than Jalen Hurts. I love you. <laughs> you really? He, does. he just. He just all right, let, let, me, let me let me ask you: If you put Daniel Jones on the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Hmm. All the same variables. He has two years now in the offense. It's not like he just got there. He's he's familiar with the offense. Do you think the Eagles are the same team, or do you think they're even better? I mean, how much better can you be than 12 Exactly. You think they're the same team? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Do you see the time he has to throw? Yeah. It yeah. is nuts. He's got like – I do I do think I'll, – I'll say this. Jalen Hurts is a better like in-between-the-tackles runner, right? That, yeah, like, I agree with that. They run that quarterback power where Kelsey pulls, right? And he – I will say that. But I just think there's so much more with Daniel's arm strength you can do in the passing game than Jalen Hurts can do. I agree. No question. Daniel's no a better question. thrower. Daniel's a better thrower. Way right? better thrower. It's pretty easy, you know – to throw to AJ Brown, and I'm not taking. I'm not. I am not discounting. Did you see Jalen this separation? Jalen Hurts is Brown my had on the touchdown. Jalen Hurts, he had yeah, he is my MVP. Jalen Hurts is my MVP. It's not even close. And kudos to him because I've loved the kid. He's a winner. He's played with five star kids since he was 15. Right? He went to Alabama. He went to Oklahoma. He's in Philly. Daniel played with doctors and lawyers at Duke. Okay, accountants, engineers. He did not play with five-star NFL football players. And he has certainly not played with any five-star recruits that are in the NFL right now because Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> so just get him his weapons. Yeah. I'm with you, man. That's it. That to me has to be the the, the primary focus this offseason. And let me ask you real quick. Give me, if you're the GM next year, Give me your four biggest needs for this football team in terms of personnel. Uh, 1A is a receiver. Yeah. Over a lineman. To yeah, be I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, I'd go receiver. Uh, a guard. I, I don't. I think the center's on the team. If Feliciano's not back, I like Gates at center. I really, really do. Or you could draft the center, move Gates to guard. But you need an interior lineman. I don't like Gates at guard at all. I okay. don't like it. Okay. I like I don't like him at guard. He's played there the last couple of weeks, I think, just because. But I think he's a center. Okay. I think he's a and a, and a damn good one. Um, 
Azuda is going to be fine too. You know, maybe. So I would definitely just get, let's just call it an interior lineman. Can we call it that? Yeah. Center guard. Okay. Second. And then you obviously got to address linebacker. Um, I think we're deeper at corner than most people probably think we are, but a lot of the guys are hurt. You know, like Dory's been out, Robinson. Um, some of these young guys played well. I like McLeod. Fabian Monroe was kind of a cool story early in the season, but you can see why he gave up the most yards in the league last year. Late. Yeah. He's, he's starting to get exposed a bit. When, well, when he has to play the number one role, I, I totally get that. He's He's been exposed to some degree. Not to but mention I, we're starting to go up against good receiving cores. Yeah, but if a Dory was on the number one, right? Makes it a lot easier, yeah. A lot easier. He has some penalties, but I still think Moreau w- would like him back at the right price, right? Like, I think he should come back if it, if it, if it makes sense for the team financially. Um, but I think they're deeper at corner than we probably know. Um, what do you think about of, Flott? You think he could develop into something? I like Flott. He's just a little small. Yeah. Um, he covers well. He's competitive. Darnay Holmes is my dude, though. You like Darnay? I love – Oh my he god. He played well this last him. week. He did. He played I well love this last week. He yeah. plays well every week, in my opinion. I yeah. he he he's competitive. I just love the way he competes. I love Darnay Holmes. I think he's a mainstay. At that all of my buddies, anyone will tell you this played corner. That that slot corner, it's one of the toughest jobs in football. You know, they kind of got a two-way go in there, a lot of traffic, and I think Darnay does it pretty well. And I think the Giants, I can tell the Giants love him. Because, you know, if you think about it, we missed him uh, against Washington. You know, he didn't play, and then he came back. And sure, he gave up some yardage, but they all do. Um, but I think that secondary is good. You know, I didn't realize how big the Xavier McKinney injury was going to be. Huge. Because um, Belton came in and played okay, right, after as a fill-in. Pinnock kind of been playing there. Uh, so where am I at? I'm on my fourth position. I went. What I say, receiver, interior yeah, lineman, receiver, linebacker, interior line and linebacker. Yeah. Let's just get another linebacker at the fourth one too. So two linebackers. <laughs> I think we. I don't mind Jalen Smith. I don't mind him. Um, I don't know how Crowder fell out of favor, but something happened there. Yeah. Um, you saw. Sure, you sure you went to social media? Yeah. No. No, I did. Yeah, because I tweeted it. I retweeted it. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I retweeted yeah. it, and I said, "This is the new transfer portal." Twitter is the new no, no I said I said Twitter is the NFL's transfer portal. <laughs> or so he saw that I retweeted it. So um but I kind of like Crowder. Maybe he just fell out of favor. They struggle at linebacker. Jalen Smith, I think, is he played good last week, but yeah. I don't know what to think about him. Yeah, he's I, I been a, he's been a nomad ever since he left Dallas, right here, and then he kind of bounced around and brought him back. Good. For certain things, but he's not a well-rounded linebacker. He's horrible in pass coverage. Yeah, horrible in pass coverage. He gets spun around. McFadden, I don't know. And then we got he's the kid more of a drafted. situational player for me, McFadden. I don't view him as an every-down linebacker. And then the kid we drafted, who was supposed, to, you know, everyone loved. I was excited about. It. I was in training camp. He looked good, really good in training. Camp. Everyone said that. Even the beat writers that I, you know, Paul Schwar, people I do my show with, they were like, "This kid was the real deal." Um, yeah. And he was big. I didn't realize how big he was. Six four, two thirty. And he was able to die. He was good in and run. Yeah, yeah, that's like, what they said. And he, so, and they were playing him up at the line. They were moving. Don't forget, him over don't forget we have another interior lineman we drafted in the third round out of North Carolina, right? Yeah, McKeith, ACL. McKeith yeah. In, the, in the fifth round. Fifth round. Yeah. So I think this team, while we say we have all these needs, we do have a lot of those maybe answers, and there maybe I don't know. Maybe they'll minds, develop. The, the, you're already on the develop. roster, so no. you can take. What do we have? Eleven picks, I think. 10 picks? I think we got – well, we tr- we added two, and I think we got two comp- – yeah, I think we got 11 picks right now. So we can pa- – a lot of them are fifth, sixth, seventh, but that's fine. You can make a nice package. Yeah. Um, and then here's my flyer. If Daniel leaves in free agency, you got to do everything you can to go get Jordan Love in Green Bay. See if he's available. Ooh. Now, if you're Green Bay, why would you get rid of him? I mean, you're stuck with – you're stuck with Aaron Rodgers. He's got another year at least with this contract. 50 million, 58 no. million next no. year? No. I don't think you would. And and the thing is, too, you don't have to do anything anything with Love because he's under contract for two and a half million next year. But only one more year, right? And then I think only one more year, but he's gonna demand a trade. He needs to be playing. He looked really good. He looked good in that game. Yeah. But well, that was against the Eagles, right? In limited snaps, but he he just you saw his presence. Yeah. Um, he looked the part. So 
maybe see if he's available. But we'll get Daniel back. We'll get some weapons. I just coming. I back. really want to. I almost want to see this thing through, right? Like it's like he he's been through hell, so it's like can we just see him smile more, a little bit more? He was smiling a lot earlier in the season. Now we're back to you know bad Serious puppy Daniel. Yeah, yeah, well it's it's just been shitty, and you just almost want to see it, see it through for him. And listen, if he fails, he fails. You know, well, the, the, the way I look at it them. is I think too many people look at it like, oh, Chris or Lawrence or whoever, you know, why do you want to push forward with Daniel Jones? For me, it's pushing forward with improving the team so that the quarterback could be successful, whether that's Daniel Jones or not in 2025. It's yeah. about it's not just about setting Daniel Jones up for success. It's about setting his potential replacement up for success. If Daniel Jones does not evolve as a quarterback. Yeah. So that's my my, my outlook. Listen, on it. You can guarantee it. The Giants are taking a quarterback in this draft. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I just don't know where. You know, I don't I don't know. Second round, maybe they, there's someone they love. Maybe it's in the first. Who knows? There may yeah. be someone, like you said, if they, they, they absolutely love a guy and he's there, you never pass on quarterbacks. You got to take them. Um, well, you saw the Eagles did it with Hurts. Everybody thought they were crazy. How did that work out? Yeah. And, you know, exactly. So um, I think they're going to take one. You never know what they find. Second, third, fourth, fifth round. I mean, look at this kid and Purdy, Brock Purdy. It helps when you got Shanahan and that. And those oh weapons. my God! <laughs> uh, okay, that's another destination. Did we talk about that? You think Daniel Jones would play well in San Francisco? Oh, of course he'd play Come well on. in San Francisco, but they're not giving up on Lance with all those. No, no, no. Players. I'm just saying. I'm just giving you possible suitors, right? Maybe. Yeah. For Daniel, that they have to be. Listed. I'm, I'm going to tell you what, man, Purdy. Let me throw this hypothetical out to you. You brought up Purdy because preseason, the 49ers were my Super Bowl pick. Uh, I had the Niners versus the Bills because I was very high on Lance. And I said to myself, if Lance struggles, Garoppolo's good. I I, I really like the Niners going into the year just because of their well-rounded roster. Let's say the Niners win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy, which I don't think is out of the realm of possibility. It's not. Because the, the, the NFC, the Eagles right now are probably the favorites and the Cowboys are good. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Niners come out of the NFC. And if you make the game, you got a shot. If the Niners win the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy, what do you do with the quarterback position? Well, well, Garoppolo is a free agent. Yeah, but do you start Lance? Or do you start Purdy? Lance, they gave up what three? They gave up like first three first round picks. round picks. Yeah, that was a mistake, obviously. And he's still young. He didn't play a lot of college football. Um, I think he took off a year because of the pandemic. But if you know, well, the, yeah, because one double A didn't play. He played at North yeah. Dakota State. But if you think about it. Um, yeah, Brock Purdy would start. Uh, Kyle Shanahan's going to play the best guy. Yeah. They're not going to – and he's cheap. What's he, I mean, he's going to be making less than a million dollars next year. But uh, I do a show with uh, Sage Rosenfels, who played in the NFL a long time. Um, and he went to Iowa State, covers a lot of Iowa State football. He loves the kid. He said, Lawrence, he goes, I actually think they got better. Not – hey, they got better – with Purdy over Garoppolo. And, and, you know, Sage played the position for 15 years. Yeah, I remember he Sage. Because they – he gives you some a mobility piece that is another dimension that Kyle Shanahan can mess around with. You know, he's – and he's competitive, and you can tell he's he's confident. He he plays confident. I mean, that that double pump pass play right before half last weekend, I'm like – Oh, you he hit the 20, guy on the left sideline for the touchdown. Like you already have 21 points, and he oh. pumped a guy and threw it to the end zone. You can't coach that. That's not coaching. That's he's just good. He's good. And so I'm just amazed that they're on their third quarterback, right? <laughs> that team is we, we had just, Jake, we had Mike Lennon and Jake Fromm, and I and we ran quarterback sneaks. <laughs> so that's I the mean, other thing, by the way. If anybody needs further evidence, and I know you gotta go, I just want to read like two yeah. of these because I'm sure people ask you a question. I just no, I, I um, saw the hot nickels. Yeah, appreciate um, you. That's the other thing, like. If you need any further evidence for people that don't realize how bad of a situation this is, last year you just brought up our backup quarterback, Mike the Mike the Giraffe Neck Glennon. Mike Glennon, before he was a New York Giant in his entire career, had 960 pass attempts. He threw 25 interceptions. Last year as a Giant, he threw 160 passes. He threw 10 picks. Isn't that he crazy? Threw 10 picks and 160 pass attempts. He had 1,000 pass attempts before last year with 25 career picks. Glennon before last year was thought to be an average backup in the NFL. Now yeah. he's not even in the league. No. And, the and Jake, Jake, his career. Jake Fromm, yeah, Jake Fromm was so. Well, Jake Fromm doesn't even. He... So I will tell you guys all listening, whoever's left, 
uh, so I have friends on that staff. One of them told me, coaches said, when Jake Fromm threw footballs, I've never seen anything worse in an NFL practice. <laughs> Wait, a coach on the Giants staff? A coach you? said, when Jake Fromm would throw footballs, I've never seen anything worse in practice, and we trotted him out there as our starter. Was it Joe Judge? No, I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> I'm just telling you, yeah. a coach on that staff told me. And I said, well, why did you guys play him? They're like, he's all we had. Yeah. It was an emergency it's Amazing. Situation. That's So that tells you what kind of situation they were in last year. What was your reaction last year to the QB sneak? I think I just turned the game off, probably. I don't know. Yeah. I don't like know if the, I turned it off or laughed. They used to make me laugh a lot because, listen, you can only get mad so much. It just got to team. a point where – You can't. And if, if, if you get too mad, then it's unhealthy. So stop watching. Yeah. So for me, I'm able to compartmentalize it. My kids are psycho Giants fans. So – um, they get so mad actually. Um, I laugh like even so, and God bless them. Jake, uh, Jamie Gillen, when he dropped the snap, I just laughed. I was like, okay, we're down 14 zip. And then they, he drops the punt. I just laughed. And then the next play was a four yard touchdown pass. I go, it's 21 <laughs> zero. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that. Cause I, I live stream the games. I do like the play by play and I had the same exact reaction. I, I was laughing my ass off after. Well, that's all you can do. Cause if you, you know, it'll start messing with your heart and your health. Like you can't, it's good that it pulls emotion from you. I think the NFL has done a great job of that. Like if you love your team, you should get mad. You should get happy. You should get pissed. You should feel all those things on a Sunday. But when it starts getting too much, you got to be able to laugh. Like you can't don't, this is not paying the bills. It's right? a game at so, the end of the day. It, it, no, no, it, it's a game and we love it, but I'm saying, we love it. yeah. But some people, you know, you see the broken TVs and things. That's where it, people you got to draw the line. Like yeah. Let me just read a couple of these real quick, and then I'm going to let you go. Thank you okay. again so much for coming on, man. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hourly billable, so it's fine. <laughs> Hot Nickel says, Tynes, thank you for doing this. Let's go, G-Man. I want DJ and Saquon back. If it fits, let's go, John. And by the way, real quick, not that you need it, but you do. I know you do a podcast with um, the dude from the New York Post, right? Paul Schwartz called the Blue Rush Pod. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we do a preview show and a post game show. So the check we're on YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube. Take away all your listeners. Um, <laughs> yeah, check them out. Art says there's not a better quarterback option this offseason. Bring back the guy who's been keeping us in games all season for two to three Smart years. Smart man, Please. Art. You're a good man. A good I agree with you. That's yep. That's a great I, point. I agree with you. Watson says Lawrence, have you had? Have you read a giant win by Coach Tom Coughlin? It's coming. It's in the mail. Um, like I said, we just had Tom on our show yesterday. It comes out tomorrow. Um, so make sure you guys watch that. It's only 30 minutes. We did a podcast with him about the season, me, him, and Jake Brown, and Paul Schwartz. Uh, it's on its way. So I, I definitely want to read it. Obviously, there's a lot of things I'll know. But hearing it again from Tom is always fun. And uh, so, yeah, make sure you guys buy that. Sure I, I remember the last time I talked to you when we were talking quickly before we went live on, um, I think it was Maze's channel, whatever. You talked about how much you admired Tom Coughlin and how important Love he was it. to you and, yeah, how, how much you respected him as a man. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and if you think about what he just went through with Judy, right, um, yeah. he was a caretaker for the last five years. And if anyone knows that's listening or you or caretaker, that's the toughest job in the world, right, when you're taking care of – a a sick mom, a sick brother, a sick sibling, a sick wife, you know, cancer. She was basically, you know, married to the chair. She, she couldn't talk. She couldn't verbalize. I mean, Tom took care of her every single day for the last five or six years. That's the kind of man Tom is. Um, so you have to watch the show. He talks a little bit about it. Um, and you, your heart just breaks for him. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's what kind of man he is, you know, Take care of your wife, obviously, till till the very end. Yeah, man. I'm I miss Tom Coughlin. Oh, and he's real, the best. Sebastian says, thoughts on our current special teams unit. We kind they of suck. talked about it earlier. Graham Gano's good. No. Um, I don't I'm not as down on Jamie Gillen as a lot of people are. I think he's young, he's 25. He needs to cut his fucking hair. Um <laughs> yeah, just come on. Stop lifting weights. Matt Dodge tried to lift weights. It didn't work out real well. Yeah. Um, he's lifted weights and it 
that drop punt reminded me a little. They both were number six, too, so there were some weird vibes I got Sunday. Um, I like him. I think he's – listen, he's a big, strong, powerful man, and you have to be big, strong, powerful to punt up in the Northeast. Outside, cold weather, weather gets bad, wind. Um, he has had some shitty games, but I think he's also had some really good games, and he's only 25. So um, – you can get him for cheap. It's not going to cost you a ton of money to keep him. You could probably sign him to a one-year minimum deal next year and bring in competition. Um, but My issue, oh. and, and obviously you you know a lot more than me about this, but my issue with the Scottish Hammer when I watch him, he's got a big leg. Yeah. But he's to me, he's not good in terms of directional punting. He doesn't, he's, and he's gotten better, I will say that, the last couple of weeks overall. Yeah. But to me, he's not good at pinning people inside the twenty. On a yeah, basis. he'll get better at that. He, that's the thing, you know, he has to work on some touch. And yeah, I thought, you know, he had a really good game against Washington. Um, yeah, he had his best game of the year, I think, against well, outside of the overtime punt. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh, the game before that he had a good one. But, you know, outside of the drop punt, I, he had a good game against Philly. Um, yeah. But you can't – things like that. Can't, I think he's the least of our worries. The, the overall, we talked about special teams early. The problem with the Giants special teams is the roster right now. It gets yeah. diluted, right? That was a great you know, point, bro. I never even thought about that. That's yeah, great... it, if you see a really good football team, I bet their special teams is really good too because there's – you know, if you think about when we played, like Terrell Thomas was on special teams who was a stud corner, right? Yeah. JPP covered kickoffs. JPP was on my kickoff team one year. That's crazy. The whole season. The all pro Well, he blocked the field end. goal against uh, Dallas, right? But we he covered kicks. It was him yeah. and Dave Tollison and Chase Blackburn and Zach Diossi and these – these guys that could start probably on other teams at their position. So that's where this team gets hurt. Special teams wise is they're so diluted talent wise yeah. that even if you're halfway decent, you're playing on defense or you're playing on offense. And then really we just have a bunch of street free agents almost on special teams. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't really study the special teams that much to be honest. Um, no, but that's a great point you brought up because you don't even think about that as a fan. Yeah, because fans of don't. all the injuries the team has sustained, transactions, it hurts right? the back end of the roster. Continuity, which is covering, team. covering kicks, covering punts, things like that is continuity. It's yeah. running down with your two boys right next to you and knowing what they're going to do and working off of them because it's like an offensive line just in a bigger field. It's a great. I didn't. I didn't even think about that, but it makes complete sense. That's why you brought me on, Tana. That's why I brought you on. <laughs> JC says love twenty six, but I feel like he don't break tackles. Lacks vision, falls easily. Mm. Not a good receiver. I don't understand why he runs into linemen. I actually saw a tweet. I think you posted it. You you said that you thought Miles Sanders was a better running back than Barkley. I think you were the one that posted it when you were comparing Hurts and Jones' situations. I think I saw you post that. Miles Maybe Sanders. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was somebody else. I thought it was you. Oh, I I like I think Miles Sanders is more dynamic. Yeah. Um, but he's also been healthier. Much healthier. Um, yeah. You know, there's no coincidence there. It's uh it's a tough position they play. You know, Brandon Jacobs is one of my best friends, and he was fortunate to not have any crazy blown up knees, ACLs, things like that. I mean, health is such a big, big deal, and Saquon just has not had good health. Bad luck. Bad luck. It yeah, it's shitty. I mean, I played with Will Shields here in Kansas City. He played 16 seasons at left guard. Never missed a snap. Yeah. Luck. It's, been, it's, it's been luck. Been, it's been bad luck for Saquon. John says, majority of people who preach DJ sucks say the same thing over and over. He doesn't make wide receivers better. He doesn't extend plays. His progression just slow. <laughs> he he doesn't extend it. plays. Holy shit. If he didn't, he would be... Oh my God! To, to me, that, that, that argument, as far as he doesn't make wide receivers better, he's throwing... I mean, he's throwing to... A fifth and sixth round receiver right now. He's throwing a Darius Slayton and Hodgins. Hodgins, and we didn't even draft him. Better, right? And we didn't even draft him. Slayton was what a fourth rounder, fifth, fifth rounder, and he was a comp pick, so he's back end of the fifth round. Richie James, undrafted. Kenny Galladay, so like handicap. It's like, like he, you're telling me he's not making Hodgins better. Hodgins yeah. couldn't even find a job in the NFL. He's got two touchdowns since he's been here. Man, he was Hodgins was open a couple times against the Eagles. I'm telling you, Bradbury. I think Bradbury's a. a I think people think he's better. Than, he was roasted a couple times on Sunday. We on can't the double protect. move where Jones got sacked on the, by Both Hodgins. times. And I mean both times it was bad. But if you remember with us, he got beat a lot over the top with speed because yeah. he's not fast. Bradbury is not fast. Well, last year, the Washington game against McLaurin, he cooked him. Yeah, he's not – James is, is, is a good off corner, but he is not fast. He cannot play a lot of man. It's why – 
it's really, quite frankly, why they moved on from him. He's not a man corner. Yeah, he's meant to play in zone. He doesn't plus fit money. The yeah, plus money a little bit. But that's why Wink has – he wants, you know, these dogs like Darnay Holmes and Dory that are going to say, okay, you want to play man, I'll play man. That's not I'm going to let you go. There, there may be a couple of other people that ask you a question, but I don't want to keep you on all night. You've already stayed on longer than I expected you to. Um I apologize to anybody that asked me a question if we didn't get to it. But, Lawrence, man, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for coming on. Uh, hopefully welcome. we could do it again. I know you're a busy guy, but any time, you know, I'll reach out to you again. I won't try to annoy you. Maybe in the a draft. Game. We'll do the draft. Yeah, before the draft or something. But thank you so much for coming on. Um, real quick you're before welcome. I let you go, give me your final score on uh, Sunday night. So... I haven't even, I haven't really thought. See, I I do my show tomorrow morning. All right, then I don't pre- want to ruin it. Then. My yeah. preview show. So, um, you I have us know. winning though. You have us winning. Oh yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel really good about this game. Yeah, I I, I, I just I just when we were talking about it earlier. I just know that when teams get embarrassed like they did, there's professional pride in that locker room. That I don't know. There's just it's weird. It. And I think them not playing actually is a hindrance because they took a week off. It's sure you played the same team, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be like we said, who's the most physical. We, we all know what each other's going to do. Um, I'm excited to watch them play on Sunday night. I think they'll be excited. They got not a lot of guys who played on national TV, right? Not a lot of them. So I'm excited to watch them. And I think there'll be a lot of Giants fans in the stands. That'll I- make them feel good when they come out of the tunnel. I think it's going to be a blast. The one thing I'm praying that does not take place, I do not want to start with the ball. It's, I feel like the last three games the Giants have started with the ball, and I know that they're not choosing that. They're The, the other team's winning and they're deferring, but we're a second-half team. That's the way we were earlier in the year. I want to I want to get the ball in the second half, so I'm hoping we uh, – And do you want to hear another stupid stat? These are things I think of. Yeah. We're undefeated on grass this year. So um, playing on grass, playing the Titans, Jacksonville, right? And this is our third game on grass, maybe fourth. Maybe I just made that up, but it sounded good. And Daniel Jones kills Washington. Yeah, we like grass. I think Wash. I think Saquon likes it there too. No, he's had some big. Yeah, well, that's right. well, Daniel Jones' rookie year, he had Saquon at the. Yeah, month. he had some crazy game, right? Yeah, he had like 170 per- old purpose yards. He had a killer game against them. And I, I think the thing I feel most common about is I just Aziz is really taking that next step him and and i think if leonard plays i think that just makes aziz and cave that much more dangerous what do you think about dexter this year man he looks like a different player yeah he you can tell what he's like without leonard though yeah he didn't do anything last week he did nothing i think he had a half a tackle yeah Um, he he was non-existent this past how can you not love dexter he's got the best sack dance in the league shows up he plays every sunday he They've got a lot to like, man. It's a fun team. They just I just wish they would That's to get, me, that's the that's the really thing that I'm so encouraged about long term for this team. As much as we as a fan base hated Dave Gettleman, there are some core pieces that are on this team that he drafted. That he drafted that Joe Shane inherited that you can build with. Like Dexter Lawrence is one of them. Andrew Thomas is another. McKinney's another. Evan Neal, he traded down. That's kind of his pick, is another. Like, there are core pieces on this team. Now we got Kayvon. We're not as far away as some He people signed Adore Jackson. Adore Jackson, yeah. Daniel Jones. A Robinson kid. The Oklahoma – is that the Oklahoma DB, Oklahoma State? Uh, uh, Rodarius no, Williams. Rodarius Williams. Yeah. Who played and got a pick, didn't he, against Dallas? I think he did. Um, he, he played well against uh, – he played well two weeks ago, I think it was. Or maybe it was three weeks ago. In Dallas, he played great when they all had to start, remember? Yep. Some yep. of those young guys, McLeod. I like McLeod. I know they found him off the scrap heap. You mentioned another one, Mr. Irrelevant, Tay Crowder. Tay. Yeah, I've always liked him. He just fell out of favor. I don't know. I don't Julian know. Love. He's a, I think here's what I like. Here's what I think Tay Crowder is. We play him. He is a 4 3 outside linebacker. Mm-hmm. We're not a. I don't know what we are. I know. I know. We're kind of multi-dimensional. Yeah, but it, but but for example, like Steve Spagnolo here in Kansas City, I think Tay Crowder would fit great as an outside weak side linebacker on that defense. Yeah, you know where he's he's not really forced to kind of take on these fullbacks and things and make plays with the speed because Tay can run. 
in our in this defense, it's like he's he's in the middle, and I don't know. I just think he gets bodied. Um, Tay Crowder's an NFL football player, though. I agree. I think he's an NFL football player. I don't know if I want him as my starting every down lineback. No, but I think he's a outside. Solid I think player. I think I think you put him, make him your weak side linebacker at a four three, and he he would not hurt you. But Lawrence, man, I, thank you again. Enjoy yep. the rest. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, God, the- we went hour twenty five minutes. That You're goes a beast. By You're fast. a beast, man. You're a beast. You're the I, man. And I, I didn't. I just saw that clock tick, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> That's a long time. My pods are like 40 minutes and I'm exhausted. Well, that, you must... that means you, hopefully that means you enjoyed the conversation. No, no, no. Yeah, we, we, we get to talking about the Giants. It's pretty easy. Exactly. Um, all right, man. Well, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for having me. You too, buddy. Be good. See you guys. See everybody out there. Thanks for listening. See ya. Lawrence, that's Lawrence Tynes. Lawrence Tynes. The, and again, sorry if I missed a couple. I'm sure you guys asked him questions. I just didn't want to keep Lawrence on uh, all night. You know, he, he only expected to come on for about 50 minutes. And like he said, he was on for an hour and 25. But I'll catch up with the chat. Uh, again, that was awesome. Um, hopefully, I get to uh, do that again with him soon, man. He's a great guy. I've talked to him before. I've, I've talked to him back and forth on Twitter as well. Uh, New York Giants legend, right? Kicked us to two Super Bowls. So that was really cool. That was a thrill. Uh, my next guy I'd like to have on is Carl Banks. I go back and forth with him sometimes on Twitter. I'd be cool to get him on the channel. But hopefully, we get him back on soon, man. Lawrence Times, really knowledgeable guy um, and a New York Giant legend. JC says, I'm sorry, no evidence of a quarterback elevating subpar talent without a good wide receiver, tight end, solid O-line on the field. Quarterback evalu- evaluation has gotten absurd. It's not a movie video game. Listen, I mean, we it's the eye test. There are definitely certain quarterbacks that are, like Pat Mahomes is incredible. He's elite. But, yes, you look around the league, all you got to do is look at some of the changes that have happened from around the league and the jumps some of these quarterbacks have had. It's not a coincidence that Tua Tango Vailoa Gets a new play caller. He gets Tyree Kill. Jalen Waddle matures. Uh, former top 10 pick the year before. All of a sudden, two is being thrusted into the MVP conversation. It's not a coincidence. Jalen Hurts, second year in the same offense. Devontae Adams, much like Jalen Waddle, matures second year, former top 10 pick. They add A.J. Brown. He takes a huge jump. It's common sense. Weapons. <laughs> play caller. Uh, offensive line goes a long way in terms of the further development of a quarterback. And yeah. Pretty much every successful quarterback in the in the league has some some something, you know. For people that say, "Oh, Daniel Jones needs everything," I don't. I don't think people are asking for Daniel Jones to have everything. They want him to have something. Hasn't had something since he's been in the league. All right, man. Thank you very much, man. DJ haters and shambles. The Tynes Tana tag team. I had a great time with Tynes, man. And and Fabian says, imagine him with half a roster. The insanity. Hopefully, he gets half a roster next year. Adam, man, thank you very much, man. Jones is the guy as much as Roy- <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, uh, I, I think I saw a bad dog in the chat. I meant to say, uh, and the exact you right there. <laughs> oh, the trolls out and about. Brandon, man, thank you very much, man. Tynes, probably the most prominent Giants kicker since starting watching football. Love you, Chris. And Tynes, go big blue. Yeah, dude, Lawrence Tynes kicked us to the Super Bowl twice. You can't do, you can't do uh, much more than what he did as a kicker. I mean, obviously, um, been a Terry, but. Uh, Times is up there in terms of, you know, some of the biggest kicks in NFL history, at least since I've been watching the sport. Hot Nichols, man. Thank you very much, man. Lawrence, do you go by that or is it Larry? Yeah, I, I should have asked him that, Nichols, because um, I kept calling him Lawrence. Maybe I should have called him Larry. I don't know. Um, but sorry, I got to your question late. Like I said, I didn't want to hold him up all night. Um, but I'll ask him next time. Next time he comes on the channel. Sorry, man. Manny says, uh, Lawrence Times, thanks for the fan interaction. You a big Brad. De- uh, sorry, man. My question. Your thoughts on Barkley being bottom of the pack? I'll answer that for you. And again, Manny, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to get to these late. I was just so caught up in the conversation, man. I was just trying to trying to give you guys some good content talking to, to Lawrence Tynes while I had him on the channel. So I'm sorry. You know, I know a lot of these donations were going to be for him, so I apologize. Um, but as far as my my uh, answer to you, as far as Saquon Barkley goes, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen uh, Justin Pennick post those stats, and I try to be as unbiased as possible. I try to take the fan out of it. Um, as best as I can. I'm definitely a fan at heart, and I'm definitely biased, but uh, Barkley's my favorite player on the team. But, yeah, you see some of the stats that um, Justin's posted, and uh, I think Barkley this year, his broken tackle rate is, if it's not the worst of his career, it's the second worst of his career. And um, the last three or four weeks, he hasn't been the same running back. I think he's hurt, for sure. I think he's hurt, and he definitely doesn't look like near the same running back he did the first seven or eight weeks. Um and hopefully we get that Saquon Barkley back this week because a healthy Saquon Barkley, a true Saquon Barkley is a huge difference maker for this football team. Um, but he does not look like the same back that we saw against Tennessee. He does not look like the same back that we saw 
um, you know, the first, like I said, the first half of the season, he's, he has not the last six, seven, four or five weeks or so. He hasn't looked the same. And obviously it's, I don't think it's coincidental that it kind of coincides with when he had that 35 carry effort against Houston. That certainly didn't help. Clock made there very much, man. Tines, uh, 47 yards. Uh, yep. That's what I said at the beginning. Negative 20. Uh, bet your foot still hurts. It probably does. <laughs> King John. He says, Lawrence, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm getting to these late guys. Uh, but he felt the love. A lot of you guys uh, gave him a lot of love, and he is the man. Like I said, probably two of my five favorite sports memories are due to him. MY Giants 26 says, I think our wide receiver core will be significantly better next year, whether we draft, trade, and sign. I'm really excited for the future. We all should be. Oh, our wide receiving core next year is definitely going to be better. It can't be worse. I We're obviously going to spend a lot of our resources at that position, whether it be in free agency, whether it be, you know, a trade, whether it be in the draft, but that's got to be one of the top priorities, if not the top priority next offseason between what Lawrence said, the interior offensive line. I personally uh, think we need to attack cornerback. He said that he's not 100% sure on that. Um, and, of course, linebacker. I think those are our four biggest needs, linebacker, corner, interior line, and um, and the wide receiver position. MY Giants 26, Lawrence now building up my anxiety. I tore uh, my, oh, you're talking about the ACL when he was talking about it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he comes back and he's the same player, but it may take, you know, a couple of years. You know, we, we saw how long it took with Barkley. Um, he wasn't really the same player his first year back. Zach attacks us. Sometimes I forgot how bad of a situation Gettleman left us in. All time atrocities were conducted in our, our front office for years and chain, I trust. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, in terms of what Joe Shane inherited, like I said, there were some pieces, you know, there was at least some core young pieces at important positions, uh, namely being old Jolari and Andrew Thomas, um, you know, and we'll see what else. So, you know, Julian Love has been good this year. Dexter Lawrence has been really good. Leonard Williams is a nice player. But what he inherited um, in terms of a cap situation, it, it, horrible. I mean, the, the one thing that he did have going for him when he took the job was the two picks inside the top seven. That helps, right? set the tone. He was able to get Evan Neal and Kayvon Thibodeau. So that made the the uh, job fairly attractive. It also probably gives him the freedom to choose his quarterback, whether that be Jones next year or uh, drafting a quarterback next year or the year after that. Eventually, he's going to have his freedom to, to choose that as well, which is attractive for a GM. But um, yeah, Joe Shane definitely took on a project that he knew when he took when he took it on with the cap situation and everything else that it wasn't going to be flipped in one year. And so far, I think he's done a tremendous job. And I know a lot of people may scoff at that and say, what has he really done? I mean, look at some of the guys we talked about on the show tonight. I mean, he, guys like Jihad Ward, right? Uh, guys like Moreau. He picked these guys up the, off the scrap heap, and they've they've made contributions for this football team. So, so far, so good. He's got a long way to go, obviously. And I think next year is going to be the first, like, real true test for Joe Shane because it's going to be the first year he's got something to work with in terms of cap space. Um, and you're going to really get to see how he wants to shape this roster. Uh, but year one, I think he did what I wanted him to do. He didn't push too much money down the line. He didn't sign stupid contracts in free agency. Um, and he made some hard decisions, right? He let James Bradbury go, but it was for the best of the long-term interest of this football team, you know, regarding his contract. He traded Kadarius Tony. A lot of people didn't like that. He held firm at the deadline. He didn't He didn't buy and overcommit in terms of trying to bring in a wide receiver. So I think he's made some tough decisions that he knew a lot of the fan base wouldn't be in love with. But I think for the most part, he's made a lot of good decisions thus far. Lou, man, thank you very much, man. LT, thank you for kicking us into the Super Bowl. Twice he did it. Twice, Lou. <laughs> thank you, man. And Joe uh, says, what does David think about our punter um, and that missed punt play? He actually talked. I, I don't know when you came in, Joe. He talked about that earlier in the pod. Um and, yeah, he kind of said it was a one-off. He's actually higher on the punter than I am. I am not a big fan of the Scottish Hammer, but um, he's he seems to be a bit higher on him than I am. But he said that play was kind of a one-off. Cody, man, thank you very much, man. What would you say is the funniest moment in NFL history? The butt fumble. It, well, for me, it's one of two. I mean, if you're a Giants fan, you're probably going to say the quarterback sneak on third and nine last year. But I'm going to go with the butt fumble. I remember when I saw the butt fumble with Mark Sanchez, I laughed my ass off for about, uh, you know, about about an hour. Um, another one I'll say is a Giants fan. If you're a Cowboys fan, it certainly isn't funny. But the Terrell Owens, the meltdown. That's my quarterback. That's my teammate. That's up there for me. Um, I'm sure there's many others in terms of funny touchdown celebrations and such. But I'm gonna go with the butt fumble. Book Hollis says, "What position would you draft number one?" And rumor has it you want to be called LT. Maybe I should have called him LT. 
He's LT squared. He's there's only one LT blue collar. I'm sorry I got to that late, but there's only one LT, and I'm pretty sure Times would agree with uh, agree with me on that. You can't call yourself LT if you play for the New York Giants and your name's not Lawrence Taylor. Uh, <laughs> it's, and I, I'm assuming you probably asked him based off that. But if you're asking me, what position would I draft number one? If I'm the Giants, it's got to be wide receiver this year. And again, I don't want to say strictly our first round pick has to be a wide receiver because you got to go by the draft board and the best player available. Um, and if there's a guy much higher on your on your board that's a linebacker or an interior lineman, maybe you go that route. But I, I think the number one need right now is a wide receiver. Um, if you ask me who I think the best player, not that we're going to be able to get him, but if you ask me who I think the best player in this draft is, um, I would actually go with Anderson, the, the – uh, the edge out of Alabama. I think he's really good. I think he's going to be a really good pro. Jay Carter says, entertain a salute to you. Tell Tynes, thank you. And to, and, and I need him to, to sign my leg. Oh, Jay, what's going on, man? Um, next. Oh man. Uh, I actually got to meet Jay at fan fest. He's got a really, uh, really cool artwork going. He's got signatures from about, I don't know, 30 different giants that he had tattooed on his leg. So uh, we're going to have to get Lawrence Tynes on there next, man. <laughs> but what's going on, Jay? And a template says, I told you Jordan Love, obviously after uh, he mentioned Jordan Love. And maybe Jordan Love will be a target. I'm not saying for the Giants, but for other teams around the league this year, we'll see what, what the Packers elect to do with Rodgers. But um, Rodgers is, you know, they're not going to be able to cut him. I actually looked at his contract the other day because I was curious because I thought hey, maybe they would trade him or whatever. He's due like $58 million and he's got a high debt. He's got a high debt cap. It's so. He's going to be back next year for the Packers, and Jordan Love's only got one more year left on his contract, plus the fifth-year rookie option, so we'll see if they elect to go that route. But it's possible. I think they're probably going to hold on to Love, though, and make him the future starter potentially, but maybe they trade him if they get something good for him. He did look good in that one game. Tommy B says, LT, I'm late. Sorry if I mentioned. But yeah, sorry I got – he he had to go. I didn't want to keep him on much longer, uh, Tommy. He says, um, mentioned, but Weatherford was clutch on that low snap hold for you in the San Francisco title game. Thanks for all that you do. Well, yeah, well, I mean, that was the one guy that really stood out to me in that game, in the San Francisco game, in terms of the celebrations, right? Remember when uh, Steve Weatherford, when he was running around like a lunatic after the game? But you're absolutely right. Good call there in terms of the hold. Um, but once again, and special teams is really what decided that Super Bowl, right? When you think, uh, not Super Bowl, rather, NFC title game. When you think back about Kyle Williams and all the fumbles he had in terms of returning the punts. Um, that was great, man. That was great getting to get Lawrence Tynes on the channel, man. I had so much fun talking to him. I just want to make sure I'm completely caught up with everybody in the chat. Um, and then I'll talk to you guys for a little bit more. Maybe we'll talk about this week's game or whatever else you guys may want to talk about. Um, I'm going to be live with, uh, Bad Dog. I don't know what day, probably tomorrow. Um, I know we're going to be on Patricia Trainer's channel tomorrow. And then I, I know he's got the Laker game Friday. So we're probably going to do the Giants show in here tomorrow as well. Chiefs way. I love that guy. I remember watching that game at home. I thought to myself as Lawrence ran on the field in overtime, Three uh three times a charm and he did it. He was the man, dude. Uh, like I said, two of my fa two two of my the best sports memories I've ever had as a Giants fan uh, are due in large part to him. Taney, you think we have a realistic path without a win Sunday? Well, uh, there was actually somebody posted the odds on Twitter today. If the Giants lose, they have a thirty three percent chance to make the playoffs. But that's as of now. That's before Seattle plays. That's before Detroit plays. Uh, realistically speaking, no. I, I, I Could we? Yes. Uh, especially because Seattle lost to Carolina. But the way Detroit's playing right now, I'm not banking on Detroit losing another game. I mean, they're playing really well. And they have a pretty soft schedule. Their hardest game they just played, they beat Minnesota. Um, I think they got the Jets. If it's not this week, it's the week after. But they have a lot of winnable games on their schedule. They're playing really well. So I'm not banking on Detroit falling off. So to me, if the Giants lose this week, I'm not saying I'm completely giving up as a fan. You know, you hope that they could find a way to turn it around and make the playoffs. But realistically speaking, if we lose this week, we're in big trouble because then you lose the tiebreaker to Washington. Um, I do think Seattle is going to start to fall off a bit. Uh, I think the 49ers are going to beat them this week. And then they play the Chiefs after that. So they probably if, if the 49ers beat them this week, they'll drop the seven and eight. You have to figure they're going to lose in Kansas City. I'm actually more concerned with Detroit in terms of the playoff race than I am with Seattle right now. Um but yeah, I I, um, I think this is a must-win game. I, I do we have a chance? Sure, it's not very likely. If we beat Washington, it's like almost a lock. We're going to the playoffs. But if we do not, um, I would say at best twenty-five percent. At best, uh, if we do not beat Washington, so it's basically a playoff game for me. This is a win, and you're almost certainly in. 
and lose, and you're probably out. And I think that's the same case for Washington. It's why the game's on Sunday night. It's why they flexed us uh, to prime time. It's such a huge game for both teams, and not just the Giants in Washington, but you know every other team that's trying to fight for that seventh spot uh, in the NFC playoff for a sixth and seventh spot. What's Detroit's schedule? I'll pull it up real quick. I know it's not very hard. I, their hardest game, like I said, was uh, this past week against Minnesota. Uh, in terms of their five remaining games when I did the uh, breakdown video. They play at the Jets, at Carolina, who looked good last week, but Carolina's not good. Chicago, uh, and then at Green Bay. And and Green Bay, I mean, who knows? Maybe Rodgers turns it up late in the year, but um, they haven't been very good this year either. So, to me, you're probably looking at at least 3-1 and one for Detroit, the way they're playing. I mean, you look at the Lions, they they beat Green Bay 15-9, to nine, then they beat the Bears in Chicago, then they beat the Giants, they lost to Buffalo by three. They stomped out Jacksonville 40 to 14. And then they beat Minnesota this past week 34 23. So you're probably looking at at worst three and one for Detroit, if I had to guess, which would get them to nine wins. Um, and if they win all four, they'd get to 10 wins. So uh, I think Detroit's going to make the playoffs if I had to guess right now. Let's see. Uh, I thought Washington was done after like week. We'll see. Um, if the Lions lose one game, we should be in. If the listen, if the Giants beat Washington, it's going to be almost impossible for us not to make the playoffs because, especially after Seattle lost to Carolina, like if Seattle loses to the 49ers this week, which I think they're gonna, um, they're then going to be seven and seven, and then they got a game against the Chiefs the following week. So let's just assume if they drop to seven and seven, they're probably going to lose in Kansas City, so they're at seven and eight. So if the Giants beat Washington, you're looking at at worst eight, eight and one. Uh, with a tiebreaker against Washington, you essentially have a two-game advantage. Like, I think we're getting in. Uh, two of those four teams are going to get in. Giants, Washington, Detroit, um, and Seattle. Two of those four teams are going to get in. So, if we beat Washington, we're getting in. I'd be shocked if we don't get in if we beat Washington. I'd be pretty shocked if we get in if we lose to Washington. That's how big the game is. Uh, what's going on, Adam? Thanks popping the stream, man. Uh, do 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 Tana, yeah, uh, you should do a game tomorrow night after the Pats. Big game for our chances. Tomorrow night? Who's playing tomorrow night? I don't I don't even know. Let me uh tomorrow night. Oh, that's the 49er game. That is a big game. Um maybe. I, I I'll definitely have it on in the background. I know I'm gonna be doing the Giant shows tomorrow, but I'll have it on in the background. But yeah, that is a big game. Um, as Giants fans tomorrow, we're certainly rooting for the uh, the 49ers. That is a big game for the Giants tomorrow night, for sure. Um, you're you're absolutely rooting for Seattle tomorrow night. Um, let's see what we got. We need nine wins to seal it. Nine wins will get... Well, nine wins does not necessarily get us in if we lose to Washington. Nine wins with one of them being against Washington will absolutely seal it. If we win... Not, I'm going to tell you how nine wins is not a lock if we lose to Washington. Because if you lose to Washington, Washington's already got eight wins. And they have the tiebreaker. So if Washington wins one out of their last three, they're ahead of us in the standings if we both finish with nine wins. Um, and if Detroit, like I said, wins out, which they clearly could with that remaining schedule, we wouldn't get in. So nine wins would give us a decent chance to get in because there's definitely a solid chance Detroit won't win out. But to have a to, to if we beat Washington, it locks it up. Nine wins would lock it up with a win against Washington. Um, let's see what we got. No, you're rooting for you're rooting for San Francisco tomorrow. You want you want the 49ers to win. 49ers got nine wins already. You want them to beat Seattle. Seattle's only got seven. Uh, Tana, do you think we could upset Minnesota? Their offense um, is good but inconsistent sometimes. I mean, we got a shot. I wouldn't pick us. It's in Minnesota too, I think, right? And we always seem to struggle against Minnesota outside of the NFC Championship game in uh, 2000, where we beat them 41 to nothing. We always seem to struggle against Minnesota. So. <sighs> It's going to be tough. I like I, I have so many bad memories against that team. You think about the Eli Manning. I think it was like a five inter four interception game, whatever it was. So that's going to be tough, man. I, I'm not I'm not banking on beating Minnesota. They could though. They have a chance. Minnesota's to me. Minnesota's not nearly as good as their record indicates. Um, Adore might be back for the Minnesota game. To hopefully he is. Hopefully he's back for this game. I I haven't heard an updated injury report um today. Uh, I was at work all day, so I haven't heard an updated injury report today. What's up, Conway, man? Good to see you, man. Giants need five to start lifting with 55. Talking about Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon's going to be fine. I know a lot of people are getting on Kayvon. Kayvon's going to be fine. I, I I think Kayvon's going to be just fine. I think he's going to be really good. Um, But, yeah, he's got to put on a little bit more muscle in the offseason. But he's going to be fine. Adore didn't practice, so he's probably going to be out. 
I know that they said Barkley. I read that before I went on uh, from. I think it was from Jordan Renan. Um, Barkley had no limitations today at all, so he was like a full go. Um, so that's good news, you know. So it seems like Barkley is, if he's not 100, percent he's much closer to 100 percent than he was last week. So, and he's going to need a great effort for sure this week. Leo was limited. That's better than him not playing at all. We'll see. We need him this week too, man. We need all hands on deck, man. Uh, Lorenzo says a ton of optimistic Giants fans after a 20 plus beat down at home. Got to be a little realistic here with our injuries. It's not going to be easy to win this week. Um, I definitely think we could win, but it's not going to be easy to win this week. Um, we'll see who plays. Like you said, a lot of it's going to probably come down to who plays and who doesn't, but I think we could beat Washington, but obviously Washington also has the added benefit that they're coming off the bye. They're at home. Um, this is going to be a challenging game. Uh, no doubt about it, but I, I don't view this as a game like, Last week, like last week, going into the Philadelphia game, I was in my in my head. I'm like, we're not winning this game. We have no chance. I don't. I don't feel that way against Washington. I think we could beat Washington. Um, we should have beat them the first time. I should have beat them by ten points. Uh, you know, if if we don't have that stupid uh penalty on the sideline. So, and that was with a lot of injuries. So, I think we could beat Washington. I, I by no means do I think it's a shoe in. Um, I probably slightly favor them, but I definitely think we could beat them. I think Washington is favored by four. Four or four and a half. I actually disagree with this, uh, Fabian. He says either we're going to be clapping them or they're going to be clapping us. It's not going to be close. I think it's going to be close. Either way, I think it's going to be close. And the Giants don't clap anybody. <laughs> we don't clap anybody. And Washington doesn't really clap anybody either. They, you could probably point to a game or two. I don't have their schedule in front of me. Um... I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a game within seven points for sure either way. Um, and I think it's going to be low scoring. Washington has a really good defense, and they don't have the most high-powered offense. I do worry about their weapons in the in the passing game, but um, I think it's going to be close. I think it'll be a close game. Probably in the low 20s, like a 21-17 type game. It's going to be It's going to be right around 40 points, low scoring, close game. That's what I think. Um, why was Lawrence convinced we're drafting a quarterback? I don't think he meant in terms of a starter. I think he just meant in general, like they may draft like a fourth round quarterback, which I could see. We've got 11 picks and Tyrod Taylor is not like a long-term answer. So they may say, All right, we'll take a guy that we like fourth round. Maybe he could mold into a potential starter down the line. If not, he could be a valuable backup. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they draft the quarterback. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, like he said, if we took a quarterback in the first. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know how they're evaluating these players. I'm not projecting that. That's not where I think they're headed. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if we draft the quarterback at some point in this year's draft. Um, big uh, What's up there, Gary J, man? Thanks for popping in. He says, hey, Chris, next year I'd love to improve the interior O-line. Um, he's got one year, Charles Barkley, after this year. He signed a two-year contract. So next year's is last year on contract. Um, I think it's for like six or seven million. But the last year's is next year's is last year. Gary says, Hey Chris, next year I'd love to improve the interior O line in the draft. Also draft a solid running back in the later rounds to pair along with Barkley, like the pack have with Jones. I would love that. Um I wanted them to draft the running back this past draft. They did they elected not to do it. Obviously, I understood it. They had so many other needs, but um I definitely think we're 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 drafting a running back this year, um, for sure. I don't even know 100% if Barkley's coming back. I think he will in the end, um, but it'll probably be on the tag. Maybe they'll be able to work out some kind of deal. I don't think the New York Giants are going to break the bank for him as much as I love Saquon. Um, but even if we bring back, back Saquon, which I'm definitely leaning we will, um, but I'm not it's, I'm not. it's far from a sure thing. Uh, but even if Saquon comes back, I think we're going to be drafting a running back at some point in this year's draft. I, I just do. I mean, they obviously don't think very highly of Breida. They barely use the guy. Um, I think we need a thumper. I really do. I think we need a thumper in, in this backfield next year. So maybe in the maybe in the fourth round, fifth round in that area, I could certainly see us taking a running back. Um, let's see. Jacob says the game is going to come down to cave on and Aziz versus Sweat and Young. Well, they don't go up against each other, but yeah, you're saying in terms of who gets the better rush against the passer. Yeah, I mean, I think the game's going to – I mean, it's going to come down to the same thing it always comes down to with Giants games, uh, creating turnovers and not turning the ball over ourselves. We're very good at that. We don't turn the ball over a whole lot, but we got to find a way to create turnovers in the football game if we, uh, you know, we want to stand the chance to win, and I think we're going up against the right quarterback to be able to do that. Hope, you know, but again, they, they, they had an extra week to prepare, so we'll see. Uh, no, I've only been live for an hour and 49 minutes. Some of my live streams go for like three hours when I talk to you guys. 
<laughs> What's up, Alvaro, man? Good to see you, man. Um, unpopular opinion. I don't think I don't know how unpopular that opinion is, Lorenzo, but he says unpopular opinion. I don't think the Giants will bring back DJ or Barkley. I I think a lot I'm I don't know if the majority feel that way, but it's certainly not an unpopular opinion. I think some Giants fans feel that way. Um, I think they are bringing back Jones for a lot of the reasons I've stated in the past, but I wouldn't be like shocked if they didn't at the end of the day, Joe Shane didn't draft him. Um, if he's enamored with a quarterback, he may very well take one. Um, I think it's very risky, especially with all the other holes on this roster, especially if you got to trade up to get him. but we'll see. I mean, that's going to be one of the big talking points of the off season. And we'll talk about that a lot in the off season, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that's a, a hot take. I think a lot of Giants fans feel feel that way. I think most I think most Giant fans I, I think more than half of Giants fans probably agree with Tynes and me, but there's certainly a, a portion of the fan base that agrees with you. John, um he says, Chris, that was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, man. Thank you for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. Uh Jacob says, Tana, interesting uh question. When was the last time we got flexed? We got flexed um against the Browns in 2020. But uh, Daniel Jones was hurt for that game, so that that was actually uh, Colt McCoy that started that game, and uh, yeah, so this will be this will be the first time that Daniel Jones starts on Sunday Night Football. He's never started a game on Sunday Night Football, but we were flexed against the Browns in uh, 2020 when we were competing for the playoffs. JC, what's going on, man? Would you draft? Would you would you take draft capital for 26? I mean, of course. If I wasn't planning on bringing them back, of course I would. Um, the question is. What the Giants are going to have to ask themselves, what are you going to be able to get for Barkley if you do tag him and then trade him? I don't know. I don't know what his market would be because it's a very rich free agent class in terms of the running back position. So I don't know what it would be. Of course, if you just let him walk, you're probably going to get a third round comp pick if you don't go out there and spend a whole lot in free agency, which I don't think the Giants will. I don't think they're going to uh, bring in a lot of outside free agents. So um, they'll get compensated in some way, shape, or form if they just let him walk. Um, Or you could tag him and try to work out a what you feel is a fair deal, maybe a three-year deal where it's reasonable money in terms of the way Joe Shane looks at it. Obviously, Barkley's probably not going to agree because if you're Saquon Barkley, this is your first real chance, your only chance uh, to get a high a high, high contract at the running back position, right? He's going to be 26 years old, I think, next year, or maybe even, I think 26. So this is really his only chance to strike it big. So um, I think it's going to get messy because I don't think Joe Shane's going to give in to what Barkley wants. I don't even think he's going to come close to what Barkley wants because I think Barkley's going to want McCaffrey money, um, which is in the ballpark, I think, of four for 64. Maybe he'll want around what Henry got, which I think was four for 50. I don't even think Shane's going to do that, if I'm being honest with you. So um, I think it could get messy this offseason with Barkley, and, and I hate saying that because I, I want to see Barkley here, but I think it's going to be tough. I think they'll tag him, um, and then then they'll they'll you know they'll weigh their options in terms of, how the, how the um, negotiations go in terms of a contract extension and what they could potentially get for him if, if they aren't even close, you know, in the negotiations. Because I very much doubt he's going to play in a franchise today. But maybe he will. If the market's not very strong and rich for a running back, he may say, yeah, I'm probably not going to get a whole lot more than the 10. I think it's $12 million on a tag for a running back next year. So he may say, I'll just play on the one-year $12 million and then um, force them to potentially tag me an extra or I'll hit free agency the year after that if I have a strong year. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see how the, the whole Saquon Barkley thing works out in the offseason. Um, let's see what we got. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I love Saquon too. I love Saquon too. He's, he's my favorite player too. But I could also see why Shane wouldn't want to spend a whole lot on a running back. With all the other holes we have on this team, the offensive line, the, the cornerbacks, the edge, you know, well, cornerbacks, linebacker, interior offensive line, wide receiver. Like, there's a lot of needs on this team. Uh, let's see, we got the team should open a hospital ward section for all these injured players. Yeah. After the football season, amazing guy, I'm going to do the Knicks regularly. I'm just waiting until after the Giants season's over, and then I'm going to transfer. Obviously. I'm telling you all right now, uh, my offseason Giants content, it's going to be a lot. Like last offseason, I took it very light. This year, it's going to be a lot. I already have a lot of plans in the works. I know it's going to be a busy offseason. Uh, I plan on having a lot of uh, uh, draft stuff up, a lot of draft content, um, film reviews. I'm going to have guys on the channel to do it. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot to talk about with Barkley and Jones and the whole makeup of the offseason, free agency, everything else. So we're going to have a ton uh, of video content regarding the Giants in the offseason. 
Um, I'll probably do a weekly live stream for the Giants, but I'm going to have a lot of Knicks uh, play-by-plays after the season for the Giants. That's that's what I'm planning. Let's see what we got. Um, hopefully our season ends after the shoot. Well, that'd be great. Amazing guy. Are you doing any Mets uh, contest after fo- uh, Mets content, you meant to say? Um... The thing is, when I do Met, and and that's why I brought that up in a video to you guys, because I, I want to do New York sports. I am going to do that. I'm going to do a separate channel. It won't be on here where I talk about all things New York sports, but I still want to give the same amount of dedication that I've always given to this channel for the Giants. But I'm going to do a show, whether it be two days a week, three days a week, um, where I talk broad New York sports, and that's where I'll talk more Mets. It won't be so much on here. Uh, you might be right, but how do we how do we explain the first half of the season when he was running good? Talking about Saquon Barkley? Regarding what? I, I don't even know what you're referencing in terms of me being right, um, Zach Attack, unless you're talking to somebody else in the chat. Um, I think he's worn down a bit. I, I think that 35-carry effort against uh, Houston and all, all the work he's had this year, and he's hurt. I mean, last week he barely played, right? There, there, there was talks that he may not even play in that game. Um, and I also think the defenses have figured out the Giants a bit on offense, right? We're very one one-dimensional. We don't have a lot of... Weapons on the outside, they know we're not going to go out there and sling the rock. So um, I think that hurts Barkley, too. I mean, ha- ha- if we have a prominent wide receiver, not only does it make Daniel Jones' life a lot easier, it makes Saquon Barkley's life a lot easier. John, man, thank you very much, man. I think Jones can get three years, 30 mil. Oh, he's going to get more than that. Oh, he's going to get more than that. Uh, from someone, if not us, I, he- I heard Carl Banks mention the entertain on his show. with, Yeah, uh, that was cool. I'm going to show you right now what he's projected to make next year. Um, according to Spot Track, Daniel Jones. Um, but yeah, I saw that on Twitter. Um, that's actually the second time in like three weeks or two weeks that Bob Pop and Carl Banks mentioned me on their show. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, they mentioned me again briefly yesterday. Somebody showed me the clip. Um, but that's cool. Carl Banks is my next target, man. I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to be able to get him on the channel. Um, let me see. Uh, free agent quarterbacks. But he's, he, he conversates with me on Twitter from time to time. Um, but, 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 uh, so next year, this is Daniel Jones's projected market. And I'll give you some examples of other guys as well at the quarterback position. But this is his projected market right now. And a lot of people are going to see this figure. going to Oh, my God. But look at what quarterbacks make around the league. Um, Daniel Jones right now, his projected market, according to Spot Track, is three years, $75 million, $25.2 million a year. And a lot of people are going to see that number. They're going to go bananas. But it's not, if the Giants were to sign up to that type of deal, which I think if they do, it's going to be in that ballpark. I don't know if it'll be 75. It might be 70. It might be 68. It's not going to be $25 million a year. They're going to structure it with bonuses. They're going to structure it in a way that they could get out after two years. It'll probably be a deal where it's more like 18, 17, 18 million dollars against the cap the first year, maybe 22, 23 the second year, and then probably an out after that. But that's his market right now, and that's what I think he'd be able to garner on the open market. A lot of people forget in 2016, you go back, um, why am I forgetting the dude's name that was uh, Brock Osweiler? He got a four-year, $72 million contract. Um, (laughs) Quarterbacks, listen, there's a lot of teams that need quarterbacks, and Daniel Jones has talent. I'm not telling you he's elite, but he has talent, and there's going to be teams that convince themselves um, that he can help their football team. Um, here, here's some other projected markets in terms of free agency, you know, like Brissett. For everybody that says that they're equal, they project Brissett's market to be $5.4 million. So they basically view him as a clear backup next year. Um, similar to the likes of a guy like um, Tyrod Taylor. That's a similar contract uh, as to what he gets. Geno Smith, he's another free agent next year. Of course, he's having a good year. Look at Geno Smith's projected market over the year he's having. Three years, $109 million, $36.4 million a year. Um so you, when you look at what some of these quarterbacks get paid, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, of course, got hurt. So his projected market, same thing, $35 million a year. Um, Mayfield, probably not a whole lot. He's a backup at this point, right? 6.6. But that quarterbacks get paid, guys. That's the way it works. Quarterbacks get paid. Uh, John, and, uh, and thank you, John. But it's definitely going to be more than three years, 30. I'll tell you that right now. Let's see what we got. MY Giants 26 says, huge fan of Barkley. I love him. I would give him all the money in the world to stay here, but realistically, as much as I hate it, powerhouse teams don't commit to running backs except Dallas backup is better, though. Talking about Tony Pollard. Uh yeah, they might lose, they might lose Pollard though this year. They might. Um, because I don't think they're gonna be able to cut Zeke when you look at his dead cap it. They might end up losing Tony Pollard to free agency, kind of similar to the way that the New York Giants lost to Mod Bradshaw to free agency. Um, 
I actually think he's kind of similar in terms of the type of running back he is to Bradshaw. Um, but yeah, I, they might lose Pollard this year, the, but we'll see because the Cowboys, obviously they have a lot of uh, money committed to Dak. They back out of that contract. They still have a lot of money committed to Zeke and they have a lot of other needs on that roster. Uh, Chris, we need to set you up with Eli. Oh my God, that'd be fire, man. If I, if I could ever get, uh, Eli on the channel, um, New York says, Chris, you should try to get the goat on. Oh, dude. Imagine if I imagine if I get Lawrence Taylor on the, <laughs> the channel, uh, that would, that would be another level. Let's see. Pollard, you'd pay. I, I don't know. I, I think I would sooner just rather draft a running back, to be honest with you. If, if we're moving on from Saquon Barkley, I think I'd rather just draft a running back than pay uh, Tony Pollard or anybody. I think you could get a good running back in the draft, especially if you could improve this offensive line. I'm not saying even draft one in the first round, maybe not even the second round, but history shows you, you could get good value at that position, right? Um, let's see what we got. Why? Uh, let's see. I think we need to spread the cap, get some inside line, uh, interior offensive linemen, linebackers, a corner, and the rest. Um, settle, settle it in the draft. We'll see. We'll see what they elect to do in the offseason. Um, earth, wind, and fire. Yeah, of course, the, the three hundred monster in terms of the uh, the running back by committee. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. I want to draft seven wide receivers. <laughs> Uh, Jacob says, Tana, is there a deadline for tags? Uh, when do we have to? Yes, there is a deadline. I'll look it up right now. I don't remember over the top of my head, but there's certainly a deadline. Um, I'll tell you right now. The franchise tag deadline for 2022 was March 8th. So assume it's going to be similar, right? Early March, which is right before free agency. Free agency is typically like a week after that, like mid-March. So um, probably a week before free agency hits is when the tag deadline is. And my guess is going to be they might elect to – they're not going to play these guys on the tag. They, like Lawrence was saying, they might elect to tag – if they plan to keep them, um, they might elect to tag both Barkley and Jones because by doing that, you you take away the possibility of a team drawing – you know, shooting their market through the roof, and then you get to talk with them exclusively. The Giants' mission would obviously be not to have Jones play on the tag. They'd want to work out some kind of deal where they can move, move the money around. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if they can't work out a deal by March 8th that they tag both of them um, if they want to bring them back. So we'll see. Big Daddy says, great show, Chris. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun, man, having him on. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I thought we had a great conversation. It was cool, man. And, um, yeah, it was just cool. Just felt like I was talking to another guy on the channel, but uh, really down to earth, really nice guy. I think he's really informative. Obviously, you get the perspective from a former pro player, so that's always good. Um, you know, if you're a listener of the channel, I think he's a really smart guy. I think I agreed with a lot of things he had to say. Cup of tea. What's going on, man? Why don't we ever win during primetime games? Uh, we actually had, we actually had this conversation earlier during the live stream, but it's simple. It's, uh, I will dummy it down for you as best as I can. The New York giants don't win on primetime because the New York giants stink. There's a reason the New York Giants don't get primetime games because they stink. So when they do, they play good teams because good teams play on primetime. You look at the teams that the New York Giants have played in primetime. They've played Pat Mahomes. They played Tom Brady twice. They played the Pittsburgh Steelers when they had the best defense in football that year to start the year. They played the New England Patriots with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and Daniel Jones' rookie year. Um, that's why we don't win on primetime. Because we stink. <laughs> and we're going up against very good football teams, historically speaking, since Daniel Jones has been a pro. Um, that's the reason we don't win on prime time. It's not, you know, I, I just love like this, this talking point that people have that like the New York Giants and Daniel Jones just forget how to play football. Like they're not the same players at under the lights that they are at one o'clock. No, they're playing superior competition on prime time. That's why we don't win on prime time. There's no other reason other than that. That's the reason. Uh, we play the best teams in football, and over the last three or four years, we've had, like, the worst team in football from a personnel standpoint. That's why we don't win on primetime. Uh, let's see we got. Let's see we got. Hey, Chris, missed it. Just got here. Yeah, definitely, David. You're going to want to check it out, man. Tynes was great. I think you'll enjoy it if you're a Giants fan. Uh, NY Giants 26 says, I'm no GM, but there is a reason why running backs – they get paid, don't work out more often than not. Running back is replaceable. Use the money at other positions. Building a team while, while paying a running back is not an efficient way. Listen, I think that I think that there's clearly value in paying Saquon Barkley for certain teams, just like there's just like there's value uh in the San Francisco 49ers paying McCaffrey or taking on the salary that McCaffrey 
is due because they are a team that is ready to win a Super Bowl. Um, the Giants, it's going to be tough because of all the other holes they have on this team. Um, it's going to be tough to give them the contract that Saquon Barkley is going to want because we're not a Super Bowl team yet. We're probably at least two years away from being a potential Super Bowl contending team. So it just doesn't add up. You know, I, 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 I would love to have him back. And I hope he is back for the right deal. But I think teams that are more ready to compete, like the Buffalo Bills, for example, would be willing to give Barkley more money or, you know, willing to take on his salary in a trade or whatever. Um, the Giants just aren't ready to win a Super Bowl. Um, you never draft. Ah, Conway, I'm not a big proponent of drafting wide receivers early, but I've sh- I I disagree to an extent. If there is an elite receiver, you take him in the first, especially with how big of a need that is right now for this team. If you could get like a Jalen Waddle, if you could get a Jamar Chase, if you get a game changing wide receiver. I, th- I am completely for the New York Giants doing it this year in the first round, uh, especially because now we got the tackle sewn up. If we didn't have Thomas and Neil, I would probably lean more towards the line, um, but the Giants have done that. They are, they've they already gotten that. I think the next step is getting that weapon now. I think they need that weapon. I think that opens up the offense. You see what it did? You see, you saw what it did for the Dolphins this year when they added Tyree Kill. You saw what it did for the, um, the, uh, uh, the Bengals, obviously, with Joe Burrow when they added Chase. So uh, the Eagles with A.J. Brown. So I think that's that next step. So I'm completely for them taking a wide receiver this year in the first round. Um, had we not had Andrew Thomas already and and and, a ta- and, and the tackles in place, I'd want to do that first because, yes, the line is certainly more important, and we still need to evolve the offensive line. But I do think you can get really good guards and centers in the second and third round area. Um, let's see what we got. Yeah, I could call Eli on. You can call Eli to book him. I got the number. If you're serious, reach out to me on Twitter because that'd be a dream come true to have Eli on the channel. <laughs> uh, Jalen Hyatt looks uh, worth a worth, worth a uh, first round to me. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of his too. It's kind of hard to project anybody in that Tennessee offense because Bad Dog and me we talk about it all the time because of the type of offense they run. But he's good. He's very good. Um, from what I've seen when I've watched Tennessee, and he's projected to go in the first. I think he's projected to go in the first round, maybe late first round, early second round. Um, but I do, yeah, I do like him. He's definitely a potential target for us if we go, if we're going wide receiver early. Um, Stanley says, Hey, Chris, what are the odds the Giants? Uh, bu- 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 I doubt we're going to take it. I, I don't know much about him if I'm being honest, Stanley, but I don't think we're taking an early running back next year. The narrative that Daniel Jones doesn't play well in prime time because of his record is it's stupid. It's just a stupid, it's an easy narrative. It's, it's, an, it's, it's, to me, it's the same thing as like judging him for his record since he's been a giant. Like which quarterback name you know, name it more than two or three quarterbacks that would that would have a winning record with what Daniel Jones has been provided with. It's a team sport. So his primetime record is as bad as it is because of the team he plays on and the teams he's going up against. Um yeah, but Jacob, it you wouldn't be keeping them on the tag. And and Barkley, I think Barkley's twelve million. Jones, if it's a transition tag, I think it's 28. If it's a regular tag, it's 31. But that wouldn't be the plan. I think if you were to tag them, you would want to work out a contract before the start of the year. So you don't have to play them on the tag. So you can move the money around. Um, maybe you keep Barkley on the tag if he's willing to do it because it's only 12. It's not the 31 or the 28 that Daniel Jones would be that you have to allocate that to next year's cap. You can't put in bonus money or anything like that. So uh, there's no way Daniel Jones is going to play in the tag next year for the Giants. But I could see the Giants tagging him if they can't work out a deal before free agency starts so he can't sign with somebody else for, you know, a big contract if the Giants want to bring him back and then trying to work out a contract before the year starts. No, I don't want the number in the chat. <laughs> um. Look Look at what Aaron Rodgers has done with the team he has now. Yeah, he's definitely regressed because of the lack of wide receiver talent. And Jay, what's going on, man? I want to keep DJ on the roster, but if Shane does get a quarterback, um, I would see if we could get Jordan Love. At, yeah, it's funny. I don't know if you just popped in, but um, that's exact. that was the name that Tynes brought up. If the if the Giants were moving on from Jones, which he doesn't want to do, like you just said, he wants to keep him. But if he, if he was going to move on, that was the name that he brought up, was Jordan Love. Um, the only thing with Jordan Love... And obviously, I haven't seen a whole lot of him. I did see him in that Eagles game, and I did like him coming out. Um, I remember watching him a bit, you know, in terms of, like, you know, his college tape. 
I did like him um, a bit coming out. But the only thing with Jordan Love is he's only under rookie control for two more years. Um, I th- Actually, it might. When was Jordan Love drafted? He was drafted in, this is third year, I think, right? This is third year. So he's got one more year plus the fifth year rookie option. So you'd only have him under rookie control for two more years. And then he hits free agency. So, and then you got to give him a huge contract. So me personally, if you're moving off of Jones, I think I think I would sooner rather just draft the quarterback and have him under five years of rookie control as opposed to two. Um, but, hey, I suppose it's an option. You'd also have to give up a draft pick to get him if you were trading for him. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, hey, Chris, check out. I will check him out. I will check him out. Who's my favorite player ever? Eli Manning. Eli Manning, yeah. Not not very close. Um, I love Eli. So he's my favorite athlete ever in any team that I've ever rooted for. So Eli Manning. Um, the I say it all the time. The player that I first fell in love with as a Giants fan was Tiki Barber. But uh, my favorite Giant ever is Eli Manning. For sure, Eli Manning. Um, I didn't I think again, I didn't get to appreciate Lawrence Taylor. I didn't get to appreciate I was born in 85, so I didn't get to appreciate him. I'm sure it would be him if I got to appreciate him, but I didn't get to appreciate him. What's going on, Maze, man? Good to see you. What's going on, Nona Man? Thanks for popping in, man. Um good to see Maze. Love Maze. Gotta get him back on the channel soon, too. He's an awesome dude. I've gotten to meet him a few times in person. Um, he says, Does the Mets payroll reach um does the, does the Mets payroll we reach 800 million this year what are we at now I think we're at 400 million if you include like the the tax penalties right I hope it reaches 800 billion you know I I find it so hilarious when I go on Twitter and I lose a football talk we're gonna get back to the Giants but I find it so hilarious when I go on Twitter and people like make fun of the Mets for spending so much money like do you think I give a shit I've been sitting in New York my whole life. I'm 37 years old. I've been sitting in New York my whole life, probably been a diehard Mets fan for about 28 years since I was about nine years old, watching the New York Yankees spend money hand over fists. And now I got to see, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's Yankee fans, just baseball fans on Twitter mocking the Mets for going out and spending money. I'm sorry. I got an owner that wants to spend. It's capitalism in Major League Baseball. I'm thrilled uh, that Steve Cohen's spending the money that he is, and I hope he keeps spending it. I love our, I love our owner. Um, let's see what we got. Inside linebacker, interior offensive line, cornerback, wide receiver, best player available at those spots for top three. I think that's if if we're not going quarterback, which I'm leaning, we won't. Though we're we're gonna be looking at those positions. I agree. Um, better get these W's. What's up, Fabian? You you think Young lines up Neil or Thomas? Oh, do you think Young lines up versus Neil or Thomas? Uh, I mean, in the NFL, it's so hard to say, right? Because they they move the guys around sometimes. Like, they don't always line up on the same guy, even drive to drive. You know, and I remember when we were going up against Dallas early in the year, we all thought that it was going to be Parsons lined up on um, Evan Neal because we thought that they were going to try to take advantage of him with Parsons, being that Thomas was on the other side. They ended up putting Tank Lawrence on him. So it's hard to say. Chris, do you think the Knicks might make a splash move if they continue? They've been playing well lately. I can't wait to start calling the Knicks games after football season. They've been playing well lately. I don't know the Caps. I'm sorry, the Knicks cap situation off the top of my head. I, so I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know. But I, I think they would if the right deal presented itself. They obviously showed interest in bringing in Donovan Mitchell. It didn't come to fruition. If the right deal was there, yeah, I think that I think that's the, what exactly what the Knicks are trying to do when they when they went out and got Jalen Brunson. I think they tried to accelerate the process, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think if the right deal was there, they would do it. But I think what the Knicks need to focus on right now is just developing their younger players, developing Emmanuel quickly, developing Obi Toppin, so that you could include these guys in a trade piece and still be able to retain a guy like R.J. Barrett. You need to improve some of your younger players on the roster. Um, let's see, what we got. Chris, opinions on Jake departing to Texas. I'm a Yankees fan, but he was my favorite player. Listen, Jake DeGrom, Jake DeGrom is my f- one of my favorite athletes of all time. I, I just told you Eli's my favorite. DeGrom is definitely in my top five or six. Um, and as a Mets fan, um, we've only seen one guy start and end his career as a New York Met that was a good, a very good to great Met, and that was David Wright, right? Tom Seaver got traded. 
Um, you know, you go down the list. Strawberry left. He, he ended up with the Yankees. Doc Gooden left. He ended up with the Yankees. Um, so I think most Met fans envisioned Jacob DeGrom finishing his career as a Met. But at the end of the day, he didn't want to be here. I mean, that's basically what it sounded like at the end of the day. And I think the Mets made out well on it. Uh, as much as I love DeGrom and I wanted the Mets to keep DeGrom, DeGrom ended up signing a five-year deal with Texas. He's had severe injury trouble the last two or three years. And they bring in Verlander. Verlander's probably just as risky at his age, but it's only a two-year commitment as opposed to a five. So uh, I think the Mets made out on what they did. I I, I think DeGrom, it would have been a – I knew, even though I wanted them to sign DeGrom because of the reasons I just said, I knew – if they were to sign him to a deal like that, which is kind of what I expected if they were going to sign him, it was going to be a failure. Like, I knew, like, you were hoping the first year or two it worked out, and then after that it was going to be a failure because it just – the guys had way too many injury problems. So I, I think the, I think the Mets thought with their brains. They didn't think with their heart, and they made the right decision. Um, The man, the myth, the legend. What's going on, Texas Liberty, man? Thanks for popping in the stream, man. Magic putting Galladay at a punt returner. <laughs> oh, man. No, they never could hit when DeGrom pitched, man. Uh, horrible luck when, when uh, whenever DeGrom pitched. I feel like Tana is the Giants fan version of Evan Roberts. I appreciate that, man. I love Evan Roberts. Um, I don't know how you guys feel, but I've actually met Evan. Speaking of the Mets, I've met Evan Roberts um, at City Field a couple times. Not that, like, we intended to meet, but I saw him coming out of the stadium, I think, on two separate occasions with his wife and kid. Said hello to him. Seemed like a nice guy. I actually, and maybe it's because I'm a Mets fan. I like Evan Roberts. I like listening to Evan Roberts. I think he's pretty good. Seems like, and he's a nice guy. And the the thing that I get from Evan Roberts when I listen to him is you could like tell he's like a real fan. Where with Craig, you just kind of feel like he's there for like entertainment. And don't get me wrong, Craig's funny when he wants to be, but Evan Roberts to me is like a true fan. Um, and I appreciate, yeah, I, I, I like Evan Roberts, man. Uh, Chris, can we win a Super Bowl in two years? Yes. Um. Yes. I'm not saying we will, but can we? Yeah, we could. That's the NFL. Things change quick in the NFL. You get the right coach. You start building the team up the right way. Teams can flip quick. Um, you know, nobody would have thought Cincinnati was going to go to a Super Bowl last year. So if the Giants improve this team rapidly, they have the right coach in place. It could happen. Absolutely. Um, if they're going to go to – here's what I'll say. If they're going to go to a Super Bowl in two years, the, Daniel Jones is going to be the guy that gets him there. Because I don't, I don't see any rookie in this class that is going to mature enough with all the other holes on this team by 2024 that will be able to get us to a Super Bowl. So um, if we go the rookie route, I would say no. If we move on from Jones and draft a rookie, I would say no. And I'm still definitely leaning no by 2024. I'm not, I'm not picking us. But um, that's the only way I even see it being – somewhat possible Jones would have to mature and take an, a, a bigger step as a quarterback in 2023. And we'd have to fill more of the holes, uh, you know, as we go along, but it's possible things turn over quick in the NFL. Um, Galladay will go to the Rams and become a great wide receiver with his dad. He, listen with, you never know with Sean McVay. You never know. Splash is Joe Burrow uh, made it second year, but he was first overall pick. Well, yeah. And he also had T Higgins and he also had Jamar chase um, and he also had a really good defense. I think a lot of people discount the Cincinnati Bengals defense last year in the playoffs. The Cincinnati Bengals defense, go back and watch the games. That's what got him to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm not saying Burrow played bad. He didn't, but their defense held Pat Mahomes scoreless in the second half. They picked off Ryan Tannehill, I think, three times. Um, the Bengals defense was great last year in the playoffs. Um, let's see what we got. We need more offensive line help, guards and centers for sure. A wide receiver one uh, speeds the process up a lot. Look what digs for Allen. Of course, once you have the other pieces in place, having the having the line and everything else, uh, you get you get that weapon that opens up the entire offense. Mike says, "Congratulations on getting times. You're starting to get known a bit." I appreciate it. My, hey man, that was that was fun, man. I hope I get to have him on again soon. Um, nice guy, man. Nice guy. He was, like I said at the top of the the pod. He was supposed to come on. Um, I think like two months ago. And then something, I don't remember. I think I just didn't follow up with him. I got caught up I probably with my new job. I can't remember. Um, but he's always been nice to me on Twitter. He's very engaging with the fans. So I think he's been on other people's shows too before. But um, it was really it was really cool to have him on. How is the linebacker free agent and draft class this year? I haven't, to be completely honest, I haven't done a ton. 
I haven't looked a ton into the free. I'm going to, obviously, after the season, but I have not looked a ton into free agency. I don't think the Giants are going to be super active in free agency, but if they're going to spend, if they're going to bring in somebody, I think that could be a position they target for sure because it's it's such a big need. Um, I could definitely if they're if they're going to spend at a position in free agency, I would actually guess it would be that position, uh, linebacker, maybe wide receiver. Um, but I I could definitely see a, signing a linebacker, but I have not looked at the free agent class yet. Uh, Edmonds, yes, I I know about Edmonds. People have brought him up because obviously his ties with Buffalo, so. I don't know what his market's going to be, but he's a possibility. I don't know how well he would fit the defense either. You know, I'll, I'll do a lot of research on these guys during the offseason. Milano seems like he's been a free agent forever. I saw you mentioned Matt Milano. He seems like I, – I, I feel like every other year that guy's a free agent. Um, Interior offensive lineman in free agency. I think we need to draft another lineman too. Um, But, yeah, we could certainly sign one. Um, We'll see. What's up, Ron? Question. Do you, uh, so if Joe Burrow was able to take his team to the Super Bowl second year, why can't a quarterback the Giants draft this year do it in two years? I'm not saying it's impossible, Ron, but it's, it, I, anything's possible, Ron. I'm not, I'm not ruling it out. But what I'm my line of thinking is I don't think you're going to be able to draft a quarterback in this year's draft without trading up. I just don't. I don't, I know the mock, and if you are able to, it means that quarterback is probably not looked at that highly because there are so many teams that need a quarterback in this year's draft. And I know like the mocks have Anthony Richardson. I know that's a very popular name. People see the physical tools. They see the potential. And I'm not saying I'm blind to it. He's got potential. He's got, he's got physical tools. Um, But what I'm going to say is if teams feel as highly about him as fans do on Twitter, there ain't a chance in hell. He's dropping to the Giants at 18. There's no chance. I don't care what his college stats are. If they see the physical tools, there is going to be a team with all the quarterback needy teams that is going to convince themselves we can morph this guy into the next great thing. So I don't, if, if he is viewed favorably during the draft process, if he has a good combine, he's not getting to the Giants. So if the Giants want him, they're going to have to trade up and, or whoever, if they want levies, if they want to quote one of the top four quarterbacks in this draft, they're going to have to trade up. And if they do that, you're probably going to have to surrender a first-round pick in the next draft, similar to what the Bears had to do when they went up to get Justin Fields. And if you do that, how are you building the rest of this team? You know, that Cincinnati's Bengals team had T. Higgins, and then they got Jamar Chase in the following draft, fifth overall. How are you building the rest of this team by that quickly? So I don't see it. I, I don't. I don't think we'd be able to have enough pieces. And I also think that Bengals run was a little bit fluky last year. But no, they listen, Joe Burrow's really good. Joe Burrow is really good. Jamar Chase is one of the top three or four receivers in the league. T. Higgins is probably one of the top 15 or 20 wide receivers in the league. Um, anything's possible. I'm not ruling it out. But for me, unless you're in love with a quarterback, which maybe they will be, but you have to be like completely sold on that quarterback, I think you just keep building the rest of this roster. And I don't think that that's a bad method. I don't think that's a bad way to go about doing it. I know it's not sexy. I know a lot of people don't view Daniel Jones as the quarterback that could put you over the top, and I understand that. I personally think, unless there's an unbelievable quarterback prospect that they're in love with, it's the right approach. And I'm not going to change my opinion on that. And that, and, and listen, I respect your opinion, Ron. I, I, I think you're one that wants to trade up and get a quarterback, and I understand it. Um, I'm not going to change my opinion on that. I, I, I'm, I'm set in stone on that. Um, now, what I will say if they do trade up to get the quarterback, I'm going to be excited because I, I, because I think the I'm going I'm going to convince myself if they do that, Joe Shane must think this guy's going to be the next Josh Allen or Pat Mahomes with all the other holes in this roster to be willing to give up draft capital, move up and get a quarterback. But I'm going to hold that quarterback to a very high standard, not year one. It's going to take him some time with all the other holes on this roster. Um, but going into the offseason, I think the more prudent approach is to is is to keep building the rest of this team based off of where we're picking. Um, to set it up for the eventual guy that may replace Jones to to be very successful. What's going on, Sports Influencer Man? Thanks for popping in the stream, man. He says, I want to know why there is such a divide within a fan base over a quarter. I mean, it's simple, Sports Influencer, and I get it. I think, I think the biggest argument regarding the quarterback, it comes down to hope. I think that's really it, I and I understand it. I think a lot of fans look at Jones – some fans just look at Jones and they think he's absolute trash. Those fans I disagree with. 
I think Dan Jones is a good quarterback. I don't think his stats are indicative of what he could be. I don't think he's an unbelievable quarterback. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he could win football games. But I think fans that want to move off of Jones, they want hope. That's what it comes down to. I think they view Jones and they say to themselves, he's not. he, he may be good enough if we have an incredible team like the San Francisco 49ers to win me a Super Bowl. But I don't view him as a guy that could be the next Pat Mahomes. I don't view him as a guy that could be the next Josh Allen. I don't view him as the guy that could be the next Justin Herbert. And I want to take my swing at that guy. And I understand that. I, I Obviously, when you have a quarterback like those guys, it hides a lot of the deficiencies on your roster. It makes up for a lot of the holes on your football team. But those guys don't grow on trees. Every team that drafts a quarterback early in the draft thinks they got their next Justin Herbert. And I'd say one out of every eight workout. And am I, as a fan, do I want my team with all the other holes on it to surrender draft capital to move up and take a one out of eight swing? Me personally, I do not. But if it works out, obviously it's great. Quarterback's the most important position on a football team. But I think that's what it comes down to. I think fans want hope. I think they want they want Anthony Richardson or they want Will Levis because they're like, that's at least an unknown. This guy could turn into the next Pat Mahomes. He could turn into the Josh Allen. I think they look at Jones and they're like, he's not going to be Josh Allen. I know we don't have the best of the best. Uh, that that's 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 why that's where I think the debate comes from. Um, let's see. Do you think Wink will match up Moreau against McLaurin again? Moreau didn't do great. I he's probably not gonna have a choice if Dora Jackson's not playing. He's probably not gonna have a choice. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Jones, he's not going to San Francisco because they, they already committed so much to Trey Lance, man. He's not going to San Francisco. Ron says, I think the reason why there is a big divide in the fan base is fans look around the league and see how all these other quarterbacks are and look at their situations and say to themselves, why can't we? Yeah, listen, I understand it. Um, but I think I, I personally think you got to be you got to be fair. I think you have to be fair and realize that pretty much any quarterback in the current, I'm not saying, most quarterbacks that you're looking at right now in the league are not going to look the same in the current situation that the New York Giants have. And I think Daniel Jones would look better in pretty much any other circumstance in the NFL. So I think the Giants need to improve this team. I, I, that That's my honest opinion. I'm more concerned with building a Super Bowl roster um, than taking a swing at a lottery ticket at quarterback. That's just me. Because I look at it like, once we get that quarterback, if we could build a Super Bowl roster, I'm going to be able to maximize his talent. And I and I think a lot of people view the quarterback position. And they say you can't bring back a guy like Jones. You have to restart. You have to start on the rookie salary. I look at it like with a team as bad as ours currently is in terms of the surrounding roster. Once I make that move, especially if I'm trading up to get a quarterback, I want to have that full four year window to be able to compete to win a Super Bowl because that's your best chance to win a Super Bowl. Where are you paying the quarterback pennies on the dollar? If you do it now, you're wasting the first two years of that rookie contract. There's no chance you're competing for a Super Bowl the first two years. So then you got a two-year window if that quarterback works out before you got to pay him $60 million a year by that point as the market accelerates to try to win a Super Bowl. I'd sooner, unless I'm in love with a quarterback, I'd much sooner try to continue to build up the roster. Um, Chris, we're saying this on the basis that DJ resigns, which isn't a guarantee. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, what's my preference? At that point, I'd, I'd probably sign a stopgap. I don't know who, but I'd, I'd probably sign a stopgap in, in free agency. Or I'd draft like a third or fourth round quarterback and, and maybe, I don't know. Um, I'd probably sign a stopgap. I, I wouldn't force a quarterback pick if that's what you're asking me. I'd, could, I'd continue to f uh, fill in the other needs on this roster. Like, I could see, like, if we moved on from Jones, I could see us doing what the Dolphins did, right? The, uh, the Dolphins, people forget, after they lost Ryan Tano, what did they do? They had a one-year stopgap. They brought in uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick for a year, and then they drafted to a, I'm not saying Fitzpatrick, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, if we lost Jones, I could see him doing something like that as a hold-me-over. Um, but I think they're going to want to bring, bring back Jones. Uh, so we got that DTR you're talking about from UCLA. 
I, I don't even think D, I mean, I don't know where he's being projected to go in these drafts. I don't think he's that highly regarded as a, in terms of as a pro prospect. I haven't seen him going in like the first two or three rounds in a lot of these mock drafts, but he puts up good numbers in college at UCLA playing in the Pac-12. Uh, but, 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 but it boggles my mind on how this fan base as a whole is so displeased with this season. I don't know why you'd be displeased with this season. I think you got to be pretty happy with this season. Imagine we trade for Zach Wilson and Dable rebuilds. I don't want Zach Wilson. Um, I don't think Zach Wilson is built for New York. You see the way that he handled the Jets situation. Um, and I like Zach Wilson as a prospect coming out. Um, but no, I don't want Zach Wilson. Let's see what we got. Uh, Samuel says, I am very pleased with the season and see so much potential with our coaching staff. That's why I think DJ needs uh, needs to go and let the regime go and get their guys. Hey, I respect your opinion. Um, I personally think they should bring back Jones for the short term. And if he, if he morphs into something more great, if he doesn't, eventually you replace him. Ron says, Chris, do you think the Texans make Jones an offer? No, I don't. Uh, the Texans are picking too early. At that point, you just draft the quarterback. They're, they're going to be picking probably first, right? They're just going to draft the quarterback. I mean, you, you have your chance at C.J. Stroud or Young. Um, you, you get them on a rookie salary from the start. I think they're going to fail in that situation, but I think that's what they'll do. J.C., what's going on, man? Thank you very much, man. Seen peeps hate on Wink. I don't blame him. I mean, are there times where you I could, I could see getting discouraged with Wink? Sure, but at the end of the day, I mean... Wink is without his best safeties, without his two best corners. He's got a rookie edge. Uh, he's just got his easel jewelry back in the lineup. He was missing Leonard. Wood. Like, I mean, it's kind of hard, you know, when you're when you're Wink with all the injuries that the New York Giants have had, and the defense still ranks fifth in terms of overall red zone defense. We have one of the better third third down defenses in football. You've seen what he's been able to get out of a lot of the players on this roster. Are there times that you get upset? Sure, but it's very hard for me to come down on Wink overall. And just the coaching staff in general this year, I, what they've been able to get out of this roster overall, uh, I've been pretty pleased. Uh, in a game-to-game -game basis, sure, last week the defense looked horrible, but you're going up against arguably the second or third best offense in football, um, and you're missing half your defense. So it, it's hard for me to come down on Wink. I just think we're outmanned, man. I, I, I just think we're outmanned. Um, let's see what we got. I wouldn't force a pick either, but I'd rather trade for Jordan Love and see what he could do. Yeah, depend. I guess it depends on what it would be. I, I personally wouldn't, but I could understand at least where you're coming from. What were the questions, uh, that, that we had about DJ heading into the year? It was, can he win a game and can he relax on the turnovers? Yes and yes. Well, the other thing that I think Jones got, a couple things that I think Jones gotten much better at this year. His pocket awareness is obviously better. It's like, that's not even debatable. Um, like that's clearly obvious. He's gotten much better in the red zone. You mentioned the turnovers. Um, but the biggest thing for me, and I think the biggest complaint fans have had with Jones, and I understand he's not putting up elite stats. Okay. He's not in a situation to put up stats. He's still on pace to almost rush for 800 yards and throw for 3000 and have about 23 or 24 combined touchdowns. It's not like he's doing nothing, but he's in a situation where you're not going to put up incredible stats. But I think the big knock on Jones by a lot of fans coming into the year, one was durability. He stayed healthy this year. He did get a little banged up, but he was able to play through it earlier in the year. And then the other one was consistency. Jones been consistent this year. I mean, Jones only has four interceptions. He's only had three games where he's thrown an interception. I think two of them came in the first three weeks. One certainly came the first week. He threw two against Detroit. Um, he's been consistent. I'm not saying he's been consistently great, but you can't expect many quarterbacks to be consistently great with the supporting cast that he currently has in a brand new offense and everything else. He's been consistent. He's given the Giants a chance to win almost every week because he has not, he's not beaten himself like he's done in prior years. So he's been consistent. Um, so I definitely think there's been growth with Daniel Jones. I don't even think that's a debate. There's definitely been growth with Daniel Jones. Um, let's see. If Jones leaves and you need a one-year stopgap, I I think it would I think it would I'm it, it would probably be Taylor and they'd probably sign somebody else as well. It, it'd probably be Taylor and they'd probably sign somebody else as well to compete with him, unless they drafted like a third or fourth round rookie. Ron says one option would be to upgrade the talent through free agency, trade up to take a quarterback, and take what you can. You could do that. You could. 
It'll be. It, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I, I'll say that it's going to be very interesting to see what they do this offseason. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to go about it. What fans dislike about Jones, it took him four years to look decent, and that's fair. But I think you also got to factor in. It, it would have taken a lot of quarterbacks four years to look decent based off what he inherited, right? He's in his third scheme now in four years. He's never had any wide receiver help for the most part. He's never had any offensive line help. Um, it's been a disaster, and I hope it gets better. But, guys, I am going to close it out. Um, I had so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I will be live tomorrow. I think I'll be live with Bad Dog. I know I'm going to be on with Patricia Train on her channel. Um and we'll probably be live here. I got to talk to Bad Dog. I don't know what his schedule looks like. If not, um, Friday. But I think he's doing the Laker game Friday, I think. So it'll probably be tomorrow. And then Saturday, I'm going to go live the night before because it's such a big game. Like Much like I did um, against Washington, I'll probably try to get a couple of content creators on. We'll talk about the upcoming game, everything else. Um, have some callers come on. Uh, I'm really excited about this week. Thank you to everybody for being here. Appreciate all you guys. Um yeah, let's go Giants. Let's go Giants. Hope you guys um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, interview with Lawrence Tynes, and uh, be good, guys. Have a good one.